Пошли. Все в месте. Какие ваши доказательства? Кокаином. We are, we are live on the Rational National YouTube and Facebook and Twitter right now. Um, joined here by uh, Lance of the Serfs and Olay of uh, Being Awesome. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, Gabrielle, is that is that the right pronunciation? Absolutely. You hit it All right. Gabrielle All right. Perry. That's it. Full name, my government. There we go. Awesome. And, uh, oh, Mike is, I'll add Mike in. Here we go. Hey. Hi, Mike. How's it going? Sorry, I'm late. And I also, I think Bender's coming as well. And uh, Illuminati, I believe as well. And Nina Turner at some point for about 30 minutes. Special guest. Yeah. There we go. There I is want um, Mike to Bender. explain just the secrets of life to me. I told Olay that. I want, I'm so happy you're here, sir. Because I've watched a few episodes of this program. And let me tell you, all that tech stuff. Um, how crypto's gonna activate Skynet and all that and all that. <laughs> that is, only you do I have that to me. I want you to know I'm a big fan. Oh, wow. thank you so much. That, I really appreciate that. Awesome. That. It means a lot. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> Was it the Harry Potter debate that you were like, oh, this guy's awesome? Because <laughs> <laughs> I had to dig into J.K. Rowling's ass on Twitter today. I really had to get five in the morning. That's when I get up. I had to dig in her ass this morning because, girl, it's, it's out of hand at this point. It's out of hand. She, yeah, she's like ramping it up. She's ramping it up. The oh, yeah. Or her army on Twitter. That's a whole section of Twitter I don't even really deal with. I'm part of Black Twitter, as Olay can probably tell you. We <laughs> live very insulated. Like we have, we have Black problems on Black Twitter. We don't really dip into other things. So for it, you know, it's ramping up when I'm even aware of what J.K. Rowling is talking about, what's going on in her day to day, and I'm just like, baby girl. Are you not like damn sis? Don't nobody love you? Like what is going on? Like it, it's too much. It's too much for me. She Imagine was, having her kind of money and just being on Twitter all day arguing it don't like, really against do. trans people. Like it's just so it's such a sad existence. <laughs> like what, what is she even doing? That's, that's exactly it though. She lives in the land of fucking make believe. You know what I mean? It's like make believe yeah. problems. That's exactly what it is. She just just sit down and mythicize shit all day. And that's what she's done with the trans people. She's just so focused. I'm like, miss. You like of all the things you could do, you just arbitrarily decide to be a bigot. Like, bitch, you made Harry Potter. We, you, you were, you were grandfathered, and we loved you. Everything was cool. Like, there was no problem. You were good, and you just you decided to fuck it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Again, bringing back to last week, there there were some problems. <laughs> 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 you know what's funny? I, went, you know, I called my ex. Like, I meant to tell you all. So I called my ex boyfriend, who also loves Harry Potter, right? And when I said to him, "Which you said," when I said, he literally did the same freeze. Like I was like, "Right." And then, and then I actually started saying, and I was like, you know, you were like, "Oh yeah, yeah, problems, whatever." And then I threw out like the Kingsley Jacobo thing, and he was like, "Wait, huh?" And I was like, you know, like I was like, you know, there were, you know, like the I was like, you know, the anti-Semitic. So he was like. And then suddenly realizing we were like, oh fuck, no, we can't like it. Not right. Oh no! Oh, you didn't know? I thought we were. I thought we were fully informed. Oh, we have to, just, we have to back out. I was like, God damn it, they won't let us have anything. 
I'm going to tell y'all, I'm part, my mother was part of the cult of moms back in the day that thought that reading Harry Potter was going to damn my adolescent soul to the mm-hmm. satanic panic stuff. Absolutely. Just my, my soul was in jeopardy if I was going to finish them AR point books. Okay. I was trying to put the class AR point pizza party on my back. And as soon as I got the chamber of secrets, she shut all that down at the parent teacher conference. But I will say this. My good sis, JK, actually not my good sis, girl, fuck you, but (laughs) (laughs) I could not imagine selling, her books have sold, to my understanding, have sold more copies than the Bible. You are a household name. There is a theme park birth from just your imagination. Baby girl, you survived homelessness. You are sick. I think they gave, they what is, what is the female equivalent of knighted? Whatever that is, they're doing across the pond, all that Dang. good stuff. Dang. Great. Dang. God bless it. All that. And, and now she's trying to wade into the criminal justice waters, because that's why I had to dig in her ass. Now she's trying mm-hmm. to say, oh, hey, girls, we don't want trans women in women's. We don't want men of any kind in women's prisons. This poses a danger. Oh, um, now she got uh, her work, <laughs> oh, yeah. work cited is basically oh, a God. fucking crack pipe. And that's when I had to get Olay. You know, you know what I, I do. I'm upset that I know. I didn't even know, and now I know, and now I'm upset, and I gotta go, and now I feel compelled to address it. Wait, can, <laughs> can, I, can, can I can I tell you one thing that I, a lot of people don't know? This one's actually pretty wild. So for the person who's constantly saying that you know uh, women can't be men, etc., uh, she also has a career as a man known as Robert Galbraith, and uh, she picked that pen name specifically. That's the name of a conversion therapist who tortured queer people. God, and she. She, she, she picked that. that as her pen name. No joke. She's like an evil yeah. bitch. She's a really evil yeah. bitch. No, she is. Like she is. It's it's, it's unreal. It's it's unreal. Because you know, I think what makes it like sickening. Everything based on everything that she says, based on everything that she moves, it's clear that to her, trans people are very other and very far removed, right? Like clearly in her life, the way that she deals and she talks about trans people, clearly this is not this is not something that exists in her life. So you've just chosen. Arbitrarily, Actually, what do you think? You think I, I, well, I don't know. The, the, level, the level of hate here makes me think that there's something there's that actually is something personal? very close. You think a trans woman stepped on her shoe at the club one time. Oh, no. No. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know. If it, I mean, look at Elon Musk and how you know it came out that he has a trans daughter. And that's why he's mm. been going at trans people suddenly. I, I think there's something going on. Yeah, that's what you think? Uh, I, I'm not going to say her children. I don't even know if she has children. But there's there's someone close to her who came out as trans and she could not handle it. That's you know what I, I think it is? You know what? That's, I, that's, a, that's a hard take I could see. I could see it going. I could see it being that way. I'm prepared to there's, entertain that notion. There's a better. lot of British transphobes now, like old stars yeah. who used to be amazing that you're like, oh, I love this person. I, John Cleese, I, I'm a big fan of your work. I love Monty Python. It was inspirational to me. Now it's like, oh, they're all massive transphobes. You know, that like it's you know, I, I don't know what's happening with British celebrities. They're not you know okay. Why I think people are being so transphobic because I think it's like the newest form of, of bigotry that they can like isn't quite anchored yet. You know what I mean? Everything else and what's like homophobic, you know what I mean? It's immediate, it's stamped, what's racist, what's sexist, you know what I mean? It's the newest thing where they could still act like it's some kind of discourse and something to wait and do, and it lets them be able to get out all of the vehement, you know, hate that they can't do for the other groups that have already been able to. There's far more mobilization. The rest of us are far more present in, you know what I mean, in law making these kinds of spaces and spaces of power. That's why I think it is. I think that, I think it's like, um, the equivalent of when the judge can't can't um, set bail on a bunch of things because of bail reform, and then the minute they get somebody for the night, they set bail real high because they're, mm-hmm. they're like, and that happens, and that's how I feel it is. I feel like it's like ah, here's somewhere where there I could still kick. But it's also a backdoor way to that's get to all of us, though. Yes, no, it is. No, it oh, absolutely yeah. is. It, it is. absolutely is. You're because absolutely correct. When you come at trans people, especially with all these laws and whatnot about uh, essentially forcing them to medical medically detransition, that's a disability rights issue because yeah. that's going to stop things for everybody. When you're talking about making sure people are dressing as their assigned gender, that's a feminist issue because that's going to circle back to women. That's going to circle back to, to all these laws, especially in Florida, that bitch DeSantis 
um, wanting coaches to be able to um, check the genitals of children and things of that mm-hmm. and he's very proud of. These are all ways to get at all of us. So right. that trans people affects all of us. It's an issue that everybody need to get behind because baby girl, once they're done with them, once they're satisfied with them, they're gonna move to the rest of us. It's just a back door way to get to all of us. Yeah, no, yeah they're, they're already, the they're already just that doing thing. it. Like they're seeing how successful their anti-trans rhetoric has been, and mm-hmm. you can see, you know, I mean, it's just visible in in the culture, uh, you know, in cultural issues, and and how um, you know they're coming after uh, gay people. Uh, the, mm-hmm. the broader lgbt community everyone everyone who flies that uh rainbow pride flag is a is a groomer now apparently uh that's something that is only possible if this anti-trans backlash was so successful to begin with yeah also, if, if you saw trump's Sanchez, if you sorry, saw just, trump's speech say, okay, go ahead yeah. No, okay, go ahead. Go before, ahead. I, before I forget this, because the point that Gabrielle was just making with Ron DeSantis' uh, new bill that he just passed about teaching African-American studies or stuff like that in schools, that was an intersection that they used black queerness specifically mm-hmm. in that instance there to be able to be like, well, they're trying to tweet, uh, teach queerness in schools, I think. And it's like there are queer black people. Yes, that that, that should be part of the experience that people are going to teach history or stuff like that. You shouldn't just erase that element of it. But that's exactly like Gabrielle was saying, like, that's where it's intersecting. Yeah, I was going to say, if you saw like uh, Trump's speech, it was actually chilling. Like he said transphobic things before, and we've seen like transphobic speeches from Republicans, but his speech was genocidal. Like he not only stated that this whole trans madness thing is a new phenomenon that just popped up into existence two years ago. But he says he's going to do a bunch of day one bans. And when he's president again, he's going to end the trans madness. So like the rhetoric here is explicitly genocidal. Like they were already kind of like moving towards that. But now like we've crossed that threshold. Like I feel like we've crossed the Rubicon to where now they're just like explicitly pro genocide. Matt Walsh today, there was a video shared by Jason Campbell. He was talking about how the uh, doctors who provide gender affirming care for trans youth should be executed in his opinion but since we can't really do that lifetime in prison should suffice it's it just it's so alarming and and horrifying and i feel like people this has to be the wake-up moment right where people who are cisgender realize oh, we're so like far past the wake-up. we're kind of fucked. yeah yeah <laughs> no it's not this is a country where they kill people bro like every day yeah this is a police state. Like, no, it's not the wake up moment. Like, obviously, at the end of the day, if if a if a group of people are loudly telling you, "Hey, the what you're what you're advocating for, the rhetoric that you spew, it is killing me." Look at their look at the death rates. Look at this. They that is what is explicitly being said. We see it. We literally see hate crimes happen. We see we we've seen numerous ones. We see what libs of TikTok are doing. They know that's so like that's very clearly the intention. They want them. That's what that's exactly what they want. They don't want them there. Like. And yeah. you know we would be we would be foolish to fool ourselves and thinking like death is some line some yeah. people don't value your humanity they don't care <laughs> they don't care you know what I mean they don't care about you in life they damn sure don't care about you in death yeah the the, the, the goal uh, is deaths but I feel like the like the good hearted liberals like they have to like I was mostly referring to them like this has got to be the point where it's like you know these fence sitting centrists where it's like oh well this side says this and this side says that like the sides like they were never comparable but we're to the point now where it's like one side wants genocide the other side at worst is just ambivalent um it, it's just I'm I think good hearted liberals when you say that right I'm like who they one thing you know, especially as black people, and before Dr. King passed, he kind of said this too, really about the white moderate, but this can be said about what good hearted white liberals too, is that more than more than anything, they have a desire for normalcy. We mm-hmm. don't, you know, we don't want, you know, we, we stand with y'all, but can y'all not do this in front of the grocery store? I gotta go get, <laughs> like, can y'all not do this at the school? I gotta get my kids. Like, can y'all do this on like the second of 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 November or something? Like, y'all ain't gotta do this today, do you? Like, so it's more about convenience, and that's mm-hmm. what really separates like the GOP. Yeah. Who, they hard down on what they believe. We willing to do this, this, this for it. This is what we envision. They're working towards 
yes, bringing us backwards, but they working towards a goal, something they have collectively decided this is what we envision. Christian nationalism. Exactly. Y'all mm. black asses back on that plantation if we can do it. Um, trans people is absolutely out of existence, whereas the white liberal more so is just like, hey, girl, if I could just hang out with my friends every other weekend at HBC. That's exactly. Really? Like, we cool, right? Somebody in the bad. comments, I right think, here. like put it really well. They said, you know, I actually see centrists Oh my God, it's scrolled up. I actually see Centra saying genocide is too strong a word for what's the right, what the right's doing. And I think that is generally mm -hmm. always the problem. And I'm always saying this, like people, you know, they don't appreciate when you come out and you're like, it's bigotry. That is a straw man. That is a this. All of this is bullshit. This is all pretext. Uh, pretense, that's all it is. You know, feigned ignorance is a veil. It is a, you know, they're getting you caught up in a, in a facade. But that's really what the T is. And I think the reason they do that is so much like, you know, don't, don't hurt the feelings of it's the same way they was they were so sick when when uh, Hillary Clinton said anybody who would vote for Trump is a deplorable nigga. That's the least she could have said. <laughs> like, yeah. like that's the least she could have said. That is the least she could have said. Add a fucking idiot, a bigot, a dumb bitch. She could have said a whole <laughs> lot of stuff. <laughs> a person who's going to hell. <laughs> like, you know, that's, that's why I said mean. they a cult right there. That's why I said I'll say that trigger warning. I hate all the people for your copy. Everybody in your comments. I'm sorry. That shit is a cult. And here is why because that should not have it, that comment that diploma comment y'all like girls y'all were carrying that and by girls i mean the media they really carry that because but that should not have ignited them the way that it did but, but it, i think that tells you that they are united i think that's the real tea is that they're one like you know what i mean that they, the reason they don't want you to talk about them like that is because that's their friend that's they that's their mummy that's their uncle that's their people that is their community that is ultimately that's what it is they're like don't be talking about them like that don't make their intention they don't want you to paint them is bad because ultimately like same same club and that's the that's the thing when we say like oh are they gonna when 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 they really see it you know all the evil are they gonna be moved to no that's the reason why instead of fucking calling a goddamn insurrection treason they call it fucking january 6th it's the reason why you know they call them that the insurrectionists and this da, 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 da. they find all these different ways to recouch everything it's the reason why you know you gotta go put an op-ed if you go talk about you know police murdering somebody a video you see and they'll say oh you can't call it murder there wasn't charges they'll, you have to call it a killing you know it's that that's officer why. involved shooting yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, the worst way. Killing. that's a bit yeah. strong i ain't saying yeah. that Bing, 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 bing. That's that's the real reason because it's like, yeah, we're ultimately they're on the same team. It's about how you present it. It's about how you're doing it. But they don't ultimately they don't with the shit. They don't they don't give a fuck. Like be honest, you cannot be reasoned with. And I'll stand on that. I know people say, okay, well, we got to bring these people back into the fold for there to be any progress. That's why these people cannot be reasoned with because they will always have this the, the cult to fall back on anything that threatens their cognitive dissonance anything that threatens what they believe if they even there's no statistic none of that it doesn't matter because they can always retreat back into them fucking 4chan chat rooms and reddit and all that shit to confirm what they already believe especially when they're coming out into the real world and they're being called deplorables they're being confronted with the consequences of their actions it they'll never get it because they, they always have this place to run back to to say no nah, that's just the left and that's just the liberals woke liberals and all this shit they coming for your rights and they they hide in your closet girl and all that shit when it when it comes to the trans stuff it is so deeply unscientific the like the position they're coming from like every major medical association in the united states agrees on the point that hey by the way gender affirming care can be an effective way of alleviating the symptoms that people experience with gender dysphoria it's like there's not a debate going on in the scientific community right now about that but there is on the right and that whole section of it where they're trying to justify it but like you just said they can be corrected in real time like i've seen matt walsh on the joe rogan program be proven demonstrably wrong by such a huge margin. He's like, you know, you're saying that there's millions and millions of children who are on puberty blockers. It turns out like there's less than a thousand, like in real time. And then instead of correcting because he's had new information, he's just like, oh, Media Matters is going to have a field day with this one. You're going to see this all over the, yeah, the libs are really going to have a day with it, right? So you're not, you're not taking in facts. It's no, feelings. Yeah. You just care, you care mm -hmm. about how you feel about this and your bigotry. That's what it is, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's sickening. To go back to the question of like, why are so many tra people transphobic? I agree with what Ole said. Also, and like not to essentialize or psychoanalyze these folks, I think a lot of it is that when you have this new um, gender minority with heightened visibility, there's a lot of people who have issues themselves that are a little bit loud like too conspicuously loud like it's kind of like the gay homophobe phenomenon right so like there's a lot of people that hyper fixate on these issues that 
don't affect them. So, like, if you're asking, like, why would J.K. Rowling tweet from her castle nonstop about trans people? <laughs> like, part of me thinks it's because she's experiencing gender dysphoria. Like, I went through this as a teenager, where like when gay people started to get heightened visibility, mm. I would look at them like with jealousy, and then be like, oh well, you know, we all we all want to be gay, okay? We just you know suppress that shit. Um, do it like I'm doing. It, so there's like this backlash, I think, from a lot of people who they're just they're they're a little bit too loud, if you know what I mean. Like, and that's not the case. Like, there's people who are just genuinely shitty and hateful. But like no, but for J.K. Rowling, she's so over the top that like it leads me to believe that there is an issue with gender dysphoria there. You but know, she goes by Robert Galbraith or whatever. So I mean, that's just one thing I had to point out. It's not the case for everyone, but. It's got to be a huge factor. Like they make themselves look suspicious. Maybe I she's feeling the, right. what did Trump say? The trans madness. <laughs> trans madness. Yeah. <laughs> he was lying on well. mind virus. Somewhere. I thought he was lying on the charges and shit. He not lying. Like, he's, <laughs> when you when you said he said that, all I could think of was, do, do you remember uh, when Macho Man Randy Savage in professional wrestling would call it Macho Madness? Yeah, and like Macho Madness. Ooh yeah, I'm thinking. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, thought, yeah, madness. I, you, I thought she was about to tell me I was a big wrestling fan as a kid. I thought she was about to tell me Macho Man Randy Savage was out there on that mag shit, and I was about to log off, my brother. I was like, <laughs> he, <laughs> you know, he passed away before <laughs> Maga could be a thing. He died before oh, Maga could be a thing, so who knows? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who knows? He's innocent. Didn't have a chance. <laughs> I was big on Hillary Clinton. Trust me. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like I tell you, though, Mike, I'm not going to lie to you. I feel like I can't I can't stand on that 100% with you, what you said. I'm not going to lie to you because I think that Sometimes people really are just that hateful, and it, but it yeah. does. There is reasoning for it. When you are told a set of rules all your life that this is the way that the world is supposed to work, and this this is the way that the world is supposed to be presented to you when you go out in it, if anything differentiates from that, that is absolutely abhorrent. That is absolutely abnormal. That is othered. That is not something you need to deal with. It's not something you need to recognize. When you are told these things all your life, what is she like a hundred now? Like <laughs> you are told these things all your life. It can be really difficult, especially as an adult. To be like, you know what? We off that. We off that. The world that I was told mm -hmm. was told to somebody else, which was told to somebody else, and this is what I was told that this was gonna be. It can be really hard to 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 interrogate those things. This is not an excuse. No, you're right. The general spirit of a hater, if we're like that's I mean, it, that's that's true. True. No, honestly, yeah. like that's that's why no, it's that's the tea. Like that's why Mike is right. I mean, most reasons why people don't like people in general has to do with something like they envy about it. Like I can't tell you how much like women. Women will be commenting about how I oh you're a lawyer, you're not supposed to be, you know, sexy and this is and I'm like, you a hating bitch, you mad because you made a conscious decision to be frumpy and you hate that for yourself. <laughs> and I hate that for you, bitch. But that's really the thing. And you know, when they be raising they hating ass little kids, you all want me to tell y'all a story. I'm so I just remembered it and like I pulled it from the recesses in my mind and I just want y'all to know right now, fuck this little girl in this story. She's a child, but fuck this little girl. <laughs> <laughs> I was so so in 2020 it was when it was still locked down in New York City, right? And I would there was nothing to fucking do. I was going on for like at least a five mile walk every day. So I go, you know, like anybody, you know, sports bra, you know, sw uh, sweatpants, whatever, right? So I'm walking, and it's like this little, let's say she's like a 10 year old girl, maybe maybe 10, and like another little girl, and whoo, and as I'm walking, the little girl like gasps, she gasps at me like. And I look at her and the, and the other little girl goes in the most she like, she goes, oh, I'm sorry. She's just like that when she sees anything inappropriate. Little tiger, <laughs> and I'm like, look, your baby ain't never seen bad bitches before. Like what is going listen, on? Nigga, <laughs> listen to me. Y'all don't understand. Like I'm walking, right? Like I'm walking. It wasn't like I stopped. The, so I like, I process this, this as a child. So I'm like, and I'm like processing by down the block and I'm I'm, I'm stewing like by the time I realized like this fucking little girl, but I'm like, she is a child. You are an adult and attorney. Imagine, you know, the police, if you go to go turn back and curse up this <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I got like, I got like half a mile down the street and I went back, bro. And she was gone. She was on the fucking step. I was looking, I was like, 
fuck. I was like, I better, I better dress this little girl. <laughs> I'm so fucking tight. And I didn't want to say that, but just stop raising these hating ass fucking kids. I was like, some frumpy bitch mother had this little girl and now she gonna grow up to be a frumpy hating bitch too. I see it. I'm like, girl, ain't nothing inappropriate. God damn it. I was, y'all needed to see the judgment. She held her sister like this. Oh, I'm sorry. Now she covered the baby's eyes. You don't understand the judgment with which she shot it at me. It was the judgment of like a 66 year old black woman on the subway. I couldn't believe it. I was like, there was so much in it. She was, she gagged me. She was a child. I was sick. I was like, in that in that girl's defense though, she's gonna she's gonna grow and change. She'll learn. Like I, a lot of people do no, change. They do grow. Let me tell you something right now as a woman. One thing growing Bible verses <laughs> oh. on the next videos. Listen, we've been women a while, sir. No. I can't tell you how that's gonna go. She gonna <laughs> raise them. She's gonna log into Twitter. She's gonna be one of them people that go to the grocery store holding pamphlets asking you to come down to the church uh for for a meeting or whatnot. They lock you in a room and try to tell you you're gonna burn hell one day and need to give your life to Christ. That's what she's gonna be doing. Let me tell you. <laughs> she's gonna be a picture she's picture. living in New York City though, right? Like she must be exposed to other there people was, like how was, was this was, there was hating a heart you needed to see it like you just needed to see it. I'll never, I'll never, i will never forget this little girl she was like she had a little she had a purple shirt on <laughs> like she had a purple shirt on she had black hair and she was a fucking bitch <laughs> i was like oh my oh i was so upset i literally i was on the phone facetime with my friend just like sick i was like you see what i fucking hate America, if I was in the Bahamas, I could carry on fucking bad. But if I go to go around this little girl, NYPD is locking me up. I cannot explain why I must curse out this child. <laughs> like, I, can't, I, can't, I can't defend this. I was like, you an attorney? Oh my God, I can see that you is going to trend. You got to just leave it alone. Listen, upset. I'm never, I've never been vindicated. Mm. Oh my God! <laughs> I just don't see what that stuff. is. But don't you know, Olay? Don't you know that everything we do, even us without kids, we gotta protect the kids. Don't you know that we gotta take these books off the shelves just in case a kid even read about a bitch like you? Don't you understand that everything we do has to be for these kids now? Even if you don't have kids, even if you ain't thinking about kids, you gotta conduct yourself for the kids. They can't see you in nothing rainbow. They can't see you in the in the mesh tank top that I wore to the club last week. Again, they can't see you with none of that. Otherwise, that's gonna corrupt their little minds. Let me, let me put this right here. Fuck them kids. Let me. <laughs> let me do, no, real. no, honestly, people raise your own fucking kids. Like, hear me out. You want to be making these big fucking life decisions. You want to create that unique motherfucker. That's yours. You did that shit. That's all you, baby. That's all you. You knew what this world was like. You knew what this world was hidden for. It's not a nice fucking place. More bad shit happens than good. If you want to create a motherfucker and bring them here, that's on you. Don't put that shit on me. I didn't make them. You don't see me telling you what to do based on what's nice for Raheem. Fuck you and them, baby. Don't come around here with that bullshit. <laughs> Figure that out on your own fucking time. <laughs> oh. It's on that point, have you seen the, the the schools in Florida, like all the books taken off the shelves because these schools are afraid of how the this new rule may be applied to them? If there's something in there that may be offensive to Ron DeSantis. So all the books coming off the shelves like it, it, it is absolutely crazy what is happening in that state. Yeah. I knew somebody like Ron DeSantis was going to pop up. Now, crazy. He's been in the game a while, but I knew way back when Trump first got elected. And I ain't even gonna lie to y'all, I cried. I really did when he first got elected. I had never really been like politically invested. Cause let me tell you something, all these politicians corrupt. One day your mm -hmm. fave is gonna sacrifice the issue you care about with all your heart on the altar of political expediency. All these people are corrupt. But oh, one thing about it, I knew that by, that the pendulum had swung so hard. We had Barack, Eight years, and white people said, "We got something for your asses," and they and they got Trump up in there, and the pendulum swung so hard that I knew it would never ever be like it was before. There is no decorum anymore. There is no if, if there really ever was, but it's something about where we are now that Trump has been able to ascend to where he is. It's as if. It's as if ain't nothing sacred. Like ain't now. It's just like it's it's. I'll, I'll put it like this. My mother is 72 years old. And we fight in the same battles they was fighting back then. Like we, it, it ain't, it, it's it's just swung so hard. I hate that she is towards the end of her life now. And she finna go out 
if we don't do something about it, she's going to go out looking at the same world that she came into, just absolutely unabashed racism. Girls are out here. Uh, uh, just, I mean, so like like Mike said, just call people to be executed. Like, like, what is y'all doing? Like, what is going on? And that is the world that we live in. And it's so, this man has really ushered in a, a, a time that we really should have moved past as a country. And it's just back now. And with DeSantis, he's Trump, but Trump with like a a makeover, like somebody who really Trump don't know shit. He don't, I, I feel like to, to, in my soul, I feel like Trump is still shocked that he won the first time, and he feel yeah, like he is. Yeah. Too. he's shocked <laughs> that shit. But DeSantis know he know how the game played. He know how this shit works. And so on the back of Trump's buffoonery that we really downplayed as a country, everybody thought he was just going to be everybody's old racist grandpa or whatever. And it really and his handlers would kind of keep the country going the way that it was. And that is not what happened. And I knew that wasn't going to happen. And so now you got somebody like DeSantis going around the country trying to familiarize the public with him, put a face to the big issue that you've seen in the news, try to normalize it for people again, especially for this new generation, try to see that hatred ain't so bad. It can be friendly. You know, fascism don't look the way you was taught in these books that I'm out here banning, girl. We're going to make sure you ain't even got no memory of that. Now, this is a lethal contender. This is somebody who know and like know how this shit can go. And I'm terrified for 2024 because he don't give a fuck. I will say, though, I, in terms of the Republican primary, I think DeSantis has a tougher shot because he he has no charisma. If you've seen the guy speak, he's he's he, mm -hmm. he tries, but he's nowhere yeah. near Trump. I think DeSantis yeah. would be lethal in a an election against Biden. I think DeSantis mm -hmm. wins, uh, but he has to get to that election first. Like, that's the problem. I, I don't think he can get through the primary unless something happens to Trump or Trump drops out for some reason. Like, the, I, I just think that the more I like I initially thought. All, 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 a lot of polling is showing movement towards DeSantis, but now it's kind of going back and it's sort of uh, even and and, um, and Trump's even coming back. But yeah, Trump had the NFT. <laughs> well, that's, 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 that's the swan song, though. You know, when someone goes down the NFT road, it's like he got nothing left. That's ripping the copper out of the walls. In terms yeah, of but media but Trump is still. What, once we get once the cameras start rolling on these people and they and they have these events, it, it's going to be Trump again because he has the charisma that no one else has. They're all going to try Nikki Haley and or. Announced that she's going to announce in a couple weeks. Like Nikki I Haley has zero oh, shot. <laughs> Wait, you don't think that random that random? I think it was West Virginian Republican who announced, and during his announcement speech, his pregnant wife passed out right on stage, and he did not run to go get her right away. He just like stood there and you didn't see this? No. no. Who I'll, 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 I'll drop the link in David. You can play it. It's pretty. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty wild. Okay, yeah. He's someone. By the way, you, you your mic's buzzing him? a bit. I'm yeah, not sure what's mic, going on. Your oh, mic's. Right, your mic's it sounds very robotic. Robot. It doesn't surprise me, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, I was. I was also going to ask. Do all of you know about Ron DeSantis and his torture at Guantanamo? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was circulating um, on my. Name. I know it from you. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, is that like? But isn't that wild? Of all things, like he he wasn't. It's like he he knew how to question people to find out what torture upset or was the worst for them, and then direct that torture to be done. That's like this person is insidious, you know. Yeah, he's that's, an actual sociopath. Like right. I don't like, have the credentials to diagnose him. <laughs> like the, he's a sociopath. That's, like, that's comic book movie shit, you know. Yeah. Standing back there, be like, oh, my torture is working really well right now. Like, what the fuck? I yeah. do think that you know? that the GOP's plan. So. Uh, Nikki Haley's the first one that's going to announce. I do think there's going to be, I think DeSantis will announce. I think that their eventual plan, they're going to have a lot of people announce. They're going to try and pull what Biden did on Bernie Sanders last time, where you have all these people drop out at once back to DeSantis and try to get DeSantis in over Trump. I think that's going to be, that's going to be their attempt uh, because I think they understand that DeSantis is a much better shot against Biden than, than Trump does. Mm -hmm. So I think they're going to throw all these candidates in at once and then pull them out at some point back to DeSantis and try and take over Trump. But uh, will that be successful? I don't know. Well, here's what I'm uh, hoping for. And I've said this before, but I, I have to say it again. Um, even though I think that DeSantis is much worse than Donald Trump in terms of like the sheer danger that he poses, I want him to beat Donald Trump or anyone to beat Donald Trump in the GOP primary because Trump has signaled multiple times already. He's not going to go down and just like accept the nominee. He's going to run independent and that will fuck up the True. entire election. True. 
So if we got that, that would be not only the best scenario because it would guarantee a Republican loss, but it'd be the most hilarious scenario. And we deserve this. If you believe in God, pray that this is the outcome because oh we deserve God. this. Well, I'm not so I, this. I have not seen this, but this is what happened. Neither have I. In our free enterprise system, in keeping every American safe by preparing us. Lord have mercy. <laughs> It took him a hot minute to go over there. <laughs> yes, he's, hot. he's really thinking oh, about it. He's really how, how many seconds was that? Wow. She goes, she goes down at four seconds. He notices yeah, at five. It clearly goes down. God damn. Eight, nine, uh, ten. He's like you can one see there. the stop <laughs> bubble on his head. He's like, God damn it, Barbara, really right now? <laughs> Is she oh, all right? My. She's oh, all right. God. Yes, this is uh, Roland Roberts. He's a West Virginia state senator. Um, they they cut they happened on the live stream and they took it down off wow. their YouTube channel and then re-uploaded it with it cut out and she what? just goes from stand in the in the re-uploaded version she goes from standing there to they didn't even let her go away they they put her back up there <laughs> in a chair she's sitting oh, oh, my, god. oh my god what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Like, this happens all the time. Don't worry. She's always collapsing. <laughs> she, she did this twice yesterday. It's, Nothing's it's wrong. Horrible. She does yeah. this everywhere. <laughs> Ever since she got pregnant, this has been happening. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, Matt Ben, don't lie to me. West Virginia is not a real place. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Star well, they live there. That's that's why Sorry, they're real. My friend had a legal problem. I'm a, you know, someone got arrested, so I had to. Oh, wow, you are. You know, I had to tell them well, what was happening. It's fine. No, it's like work. You know, I, it's fine. You're always on duty. Yeah, so I had to be a real lawyer for a second. My All phone right. ring after five o'clock. Is air man for themselves? I can't do nothing with y'all. <laughs> 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 no, I, it is nice. I can't do shit for y'all, baby. <laughs> no, it is nice to like have the you know I have the have the answers. I'm like, oh okay, this is fine. This is how this is gonna go. This is gonna show. It's okay. <laughs> like this feels like this is actually not alarming. Y'all are okay. This this is nice. Like then, it's you when know, your like, friends call you with a new problem, huh? No, it's like, and then are you like, I have to go back to my internet show in the middle of the call. I, yeah, but to me, love was pausing it to like, okay, I'm gonna tend to this legal issue. I'm like, at least I don't have to. It's fine. It's fine. I'm not. I don't have to go down to court and go arraign somebody. It's all good. Oh, good. I will say, at some point, maybe I can do this now. I got a couple of clips from uh, Marjorie Taylor Green this oh, week. God. Um, oh, you guys want to watch these? They're, they they are, hila are well, hilarious like and and crazy at the same time. Yeah, uh, not from the, the so yeah, I think the same day. The same yeah. day this these two clips happened, I think she went on Greenwald show, which is bonkers uh, I, was, I guess i was not watching for him anymore the show by the way it is once again one of those just like it's just pr he's just he does the exact same thing with her that he was doing with alex jones yeah where it's just like people got mad that i'm even asking you questions but i'm not allowed to ask like uh, a sitting congressional member questions you know and and you've recanted all the bad things you've done i was like no she hasn't yeah she what? Has no, many, the ratio of, like the speed of which she gets these out and then like has to uh denounce them it, it's it's mathematically impossible so we this is during this a earlier a, today uh, on the majority report. Oh, did it's, you? A, it's a great one. It's a great. <laughs> this is a, one. Yeah, a house oversight hearing. Actually, I got two of these. So this one's on on one topic, but this is a, a house oversight committee hearing on how um, COVID relief money was spent. And look at what MTG is uh, so focused on here. Darrow, can you tell me how much money was given to Drag Queen Story Hour? Hey, dispatch. I'm sorry. Like drag queen story time <laughs> where, where men dress up as women and, and read confusing books to children. Confusing. Not this bitch who finds children's books. Idiot. The answer to either one of those. <laughs> uh, we need to look at this, and I, I urge you to do that. Um, they, uh, Bradbury <laughs> Sullivan LGBT Community Center in Pennsylvania <laughs> received sixteen thousand dollars. Oh wow! Uh, sixteen. Story oh, time, oh, uh, from bitch. from COVID cash. How much did she, did she get? She got like what, like one hundred eighty thousand dollars? Over a hundred. Taylor Green did. Over one hundred fifty-eight thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Yes, and um, <laughs> uh, I I saw reports. I I I recall that some of that money she put into her campaign. I mean, if mm. that that seems very sketchy. I mean, I guess it's it's. I, I don't know what the deal is there, but um, yes, yeah, she has that 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 
construction company from her father that she runs somehow that I think sounds like a front for something. Uh, like something again, right pure spec. Yeah, pure speculation on my part. Just want to make that clear. But um, yeah, you know, one of those bootstrappers who, uh, you know, started a company that her dad actually created and let oh, her hand it down to her. I swear to God, like America is a whole Mickey Mouse operation. Like just <laughs> like what is like what is this content, man? Like y'all, all this country full of millions of people and serious issues, and y'all have bitches up in the fucking Congress talking shit, talking about how much is we got. We got one more here. This is this is another topic that she's very. <laughs> Before you play that, David, about. can we just yes. appreciate his response when he's like, what? I thought you said dry yeah. food. <laughs> so yeah, fucking hilarious. His face. He was so that was, that was, taken off guard. This is like, what? That was amazing. I would, I would love to know what this man thinks dry clean story hour. Dry <laughs> 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 clean story hour. <laughs> you tell me uh, how, much, how much COVID cash went the CRT. The CRT. Critical race theory in education. It's it's a racist He's not on Twitter. <laughs> uh, curriculum used to teach children uh, that somehow their white skin is not children. Equal to white babies. White, white babies, babies are other. evil. Oh That's what God. it teaches. Like, like <laughs> man, you know, all stressing me out. That there's provisions that the hey, this uh, is federal funds generally are not used. They're supposed to be used for curriculum. Oh, uh, it's a state. Oh, local. Mr. Dodaro, I have to tell you, in Illinois, that they, they received five point one billion. Um, oh, bitch! No, no, I have a billion dollars. Rewind it a little bit. Rewind a little bit. Wait, hold on. You got to hear what she says. You got to hear. You got to hear what she says. Rewind it a little bit. Just you got to hear what she says. I have to tell you, in Illinois, that they, they received five point one billion um, at at an elementary school there that, that used it for <laughs> equity. Five, all right, that's it. Um, five point one billion for a single one, elementary one school. school. It they gave out that's they, the entire they, state, they, right? So well funded. <laughs> like, y'all ain't embarrassed? Like, as a nation, y'all ain't shame? I say y'all because I'm not from here. You oh, I'm good. Like, trust me. Like, yeah. Aren't, aren't you all ashamed by this? No, bitch. I'm ashamed of Canada, too. Well, to I will fair. come down <laughs> yeah. for the monetary fee. I will, for $1.1 billion, I will come down there and teach all those children. Guys, if you are any of your viewers, I will come down there. Please call me. <laughs> Listen, I, I I I looked into this, and it turns out that she's true. At this school, they gave every child a fighter plane, and they all dropped bombs. <laughs> they all dropped bombs on all the white children in Illinois under the CRT program. It was very <laughs> not the white babies, all the white babies. They should no help me out, bro. Like y'all should not have people this fucking dumb. In public, in like public facing. No, honestly, not even just that. She's also she's not one of committees. Like that's what that's what's so insane about this. She's the one asking question, asking experts questions. It's <laughs> not honor. acceptable to it's have children in, honor in government. <laughs> and, and that's like I can not believe in this system. If I was a child growing up in this country, you want me to learn MLA format? You want me to do all this shit? You want me to fact fact check? And do all this nonsense, but look at what the fuck is happening in Congress. Like she can just the say that. Are so like, unfair. No one, no one yeah. cuts her off. Like, excuse me, excuse me, ma'am, ma'am. This is a serious establishment. You, you cannot just say that. <laughs> <laughs> like, she just what are the like, words coming out of your like, mouth right now? She literally <laughs> goes to work on some performance theater shit, and that's the sickening part. Like, while they may be fucking stupid, and not they are. <laughs> this is all very much so orchestrated mess. Like they're just appealing to the nuts that keep them there. She's just like, hey, hey, I'm gonna get this shit off. <laughs> Sir, <laughs> how much money they give to see her tea? I'm personally offended by it. I'm personally offended by it. In a serious note, I'm really personally offended by that shit because one, COVID was a catastrophe. Everybody knows that. I, for y'all that don't know, I work as an epidemiologist. Oh, so the pandemic, mm -hmm. things of that nature is my job. And I will say this, what COVID, let me tell you what COVID funds were really used for, and that's to build prisons or to fund the prisons. Alabama diverted, I think, $400 million of their money to go to a brand new goddamn prison. So that's what that shit Oh my God. Do. And so- what? I didn't know that. Yeah, they're diverting that money that Biden said, hey girl, the worst of it's over, do what you want. So yeah, they're diverting that money to the prisons. So to worry about this simple ass, silly ass shit, when people really still out here dying, think about 500 people a day or so are still dying from it. You got people, it, 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 
our public health infrastructure is absolutely in collapse. And instead of talking about what this funding is really going to, you're just doing silly ass shit. Like, and don't get me wrong, Marjorie Taylor Greene is another person who I think is, was absolutely shocked that she won. Um, didn't expect to be going this far in her career. Now she's just playing that shit by ear, just trying to figure it out, faking it till she's making it. So I don't really expect too much from her. Um, don't show me another video of her until she clips those ends, and I mean that trigger warning. I was thinking that I am no bitch. I was like, she is not focused on the right things. Her hair, her hair, hair is fried, dyed. <laughs> <like, laughs> <God. laughs> that <laughs> terrible. You ought to be shaming yourself. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's big fact. You look crazy. No, big T. I'm just I'm cringing uh, thinking about her saying reclaiming my time and her like accent and excuse me, I just, what, huh? excuse me what happened? Well, no, I'm just like imagining because now she's on the the House Oversight Committee. Like I'm envisioning her like trying oh. to grill someone about CRT oh. and she's like reclaiming my time. Like you know how she's like it's a terrible accent, but you get what I'm saying. Like you can like visualize her voice in your yeah, head. She hasn't actually done that yet, right? She hasn't she hasn't mocked mocked Maxine Waters. Has she done that? I, uh, she's mocked, I don't see she didn't mock anybody. No, that's the real term that they use for that, though. That's also, like, not too much on the southern accent, dog. I know you hear mine, so let's all just relax. <laughs> I thought we was friends. <laughs> 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 I thought we was friends. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we was friends. I It's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> what is it? Uh, oh, did y'all... I meant to say... Um, did y'all see Letter Hacks um, war awards? I don't know. Maybe yeah, like, so I, mean, I don't know. Is that today? I mean, no, I missed that. I didn't see it. Oh, you didn't I, see I'm it? Uh uh-uh. uh. Probably because you didn't Ooh. get nothing. It was just a comic, <laughs> the comic, right? But, um, the, I, wait, is, is it a new one or is it an old one? To let y'all yeah, know. No, it's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> new, new, new awards <laughs> were handed out this year. Oh, there's new awards. I, I just. I just want to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me pull it up on the screen while we talk about it. Hold on, let's. Uh... I'm trying to yeah, find, let's uh... see these awards. Yeah, is you ain't seen them? No, I I've already been on Twitter today very much. Just to I got the fly ass nigga award. <laughs> someone, someone in chat says it's okay to laugh at Lance's accent. That is correct. You are allowed to mock uh, Canadians ruthlessly. It is good and healthy and should be encouraged. No, that's not it. I just dropped it in the chat. Oh, sorry. Let me let, let me grab that. <laughs> Lance, can you do me a favor? Um, can you say the yeah. word about? <laughs> about? Yes, Lance, you say that. Don't ask me. <laughs> about. Well, come on there, buddy. What are you trying to talk about? Your hoser? Come on there. Uh, oh, yeah. I thought we were friends here, you know? Oh, by the way, uh, my condolences about. about your your country's groundhog. That's very very funny. Oh, and very sad, right? Fucking, what is this timeline? You know, I'm just like, all this shit is happening, blah blah blah. And it's like, and by the way, instead of seeing the shadow this year, the groundhog has died. And you're like, Hold what? On. This Hold what? on. <laughs> First of all, Canada, two questions, two things. One is a question. Mm. The second is a statement. First, Canada, y'all have a groundhog too. I didn't know y'all did that too. Two. Well. <laughs> It's, it's speaking of, I'm not sure who the groundhog was specifically. It's, it's, it's a it's a Quebec uh, groundhog. Oh, okay, Quebec groundhog. Yeah. What's his it's, name it's again? How do you pronounce it? Fred. King what? of dead groundhogs. Do y'all remember the time De Blasio killed the groundhog in Groundhog's Day? Who could forget? Blasio murdered the groundhog. Staten Island Chuck. And interestingly enough, Staten Island Chuck's got the best record. He's got the best record of any of them. Hold exploded on, onto the scene. I think that's that's the award. That's, that's me. Hold on. Look at the nails. Hold on, they got me. Nice. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'd like to thank my mommy and daddy for fucking did <laughs> doing that. They got it really right. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus for having such a vision. <laughs> like, what is this? This is the International Bad Bitch Award. What is this? What is and, and you know this. <laughs> and it is. <laughs> Bender is most likely to piss off Elon Musk. Absolutely. Oh, Bender got an award. Oh, yeah. I didn't even see that. <laughs> yes, that's and true. I was that I right? was drawn I was drawn with a, 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 a rather large cranium for some reason. Oh, for <laughs> I think your head's like, like this. I think that's what. Large cheeks. That's a beard dead on though, Matt. I'm gonna tell you, they got that dead on. They was concentrating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I would like to see the uh, wizarding hat measure that skull. <laughs> 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 yeah. right. The hat wouldn't even fit. <laughs> oh my god. And many a crown. 
In other news today, you know what happened today? Ilhan what? Omar voted to uh, or voted oh, by the GOP yeah. kicked off of uh, the mm -hmm. House Foreign Affairs Committee oh on it on a party line vote because apparently she's anti-Semitic because Great she criticizes the right wing uh, Israeli government and their apartheid. And from there are actually some really good speeches today from like in, in defense of her from AOC from mm -hmm. uh, uh, even even like people like Eric Swalwell um, defending mm -hmm. her. So it was it was good to see that that you know the party came together to to defend her even. Yeah. You know, Still, though, some are like, well, Ilhan Omar has said some bad things, but she's apologized. So we should like from the Democratic Party saying that mm. shit like, no, she had she made a comment a couple of years ago about um someone was all about the Benjamins because they're taking money from, I think, APAC. And that is a line from a rap song that's referring to Benjamin Franklin on a hundred dollar bill. I don't know how like. I, I guess I, I, if you're crazy, maybe that can be viewed as anti-Semitic. But it was a criticism of the amount of money being poured into the system from a uh, from groups connected to a far right wing Israeli government. That that was, and she criticizes all governments, including the U.S. government. So she's consistent on that issue. Yet, uh, uh, anyways, the whole thing is so stupid. But this is I, what I happens now that they have control. It. And I totally agreed. Like the amount, like the double standard is ridiculous. Trump was the president of the United States and has said so many anti Semitic things, like hardcore mm -hmm. anti Semitic things, right? And, like, the, and he's not the only one. There's tons. You, you look at this and it's like people always going off about, uh, you know, well, the Rothschilds and Bloomberg and blah, 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 and like all this kind of stuff. It's like, okay, you're using some dog whistles, but this is still some hardcore you, you shit, know right? Different. You know what's different? All them people is like, <laughs> all them people. Like I said, she had you missing a very important point. Like, right. she, audacity to be born both black and oh, like, he's a brown muslim woman what you talking about that's why <laughs> that's that all that is. yeah that's what uh, ilhan omar brought that up aoc brought that up others brought that up that's why like that's yeah. why they they were targeting her is because she's a, a black woman who's a muslim like it's it's the you know it's everything wrong in the world from the gop perspective yep that's fact nobody with clipped ends like that gonna be talking to me no any kind of way number one that's number one y'all party is the party of chopped ends Okay, invisible parts. I didn't. I can't deal with none of that. You're not gonna be talking to me crazy. I, I would be in Congress <laughs> acting a fool if I realized that's how they were. Like, honest to God, like the only thing that keeps these kind of like things in check is if everybody agrees to follow. You know what I mean? The procedure. I remember being in a mock trial competition in law school, and when I realized, like, the judge they had judging and she didn't know the rules of evidence, like, you know, she get overwhelmed, and this could be a Mickey Mouse operation. Oh my God, I wouldn't let the fucking other team get through a direct objection. <laughs> I, was, listen, I like won, like, I was, my, by the time I was done, I won by so much, but my coach was so fucking sick of me. He was upset. I was in there, like, I just took over kangaroo court. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> foolishness. If I saw, if I had to be in Congress with certified dumb like these people i'd be in there doing fun. you might be angry like this this is aoc defending ilhan omar during this uh this vote thank you now as also as a fellow new york i think one of the things that we should talk about here is also one of the disgusting legacies after 9 11 has been the targeting and racism against muslim americans throughout the united states of america and this is an extension of that legacy consistency there is nothing consistent with the republican party's continued attack except for the racism and incitement of violence against women of color in this body i had a member of the republican caucus threaten my life and you all and the Republican caucus rewarded him with one of the most prestigious committee assignments in this Congress. Don't tell me this is about consistency. Don't tell me that this is about an a, a condemnation of anti-Semitic so remarks racist. when you have a member of the Republican caucus who, have, who has talked about Jewish space lasers and an, an entire amount of tropes and also elevated her to some of the highest committee assignments in this body. This is about targeting women of color in the, in the United States of America. Don't tell me because I didn't get a single apology. Time is expired. My life was threatened. Thank you. Marjorie Taylor Greene spoke at a Nick Fuentes rally. The neo-Nazi, Nick yeah. Fuentes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know people say that the left calls everyone Nazis. Everything you don't like is a Nazi. But Nick Fuentes, he's an avowed, I fucking love Hitler kind of dude. The one who is touring now with Ye on the anti-Semitic tour. Uh, so, like, Marjorie Taylor Greene, that, uh, that alone should be like, well, this is obviously extreme. Right, like this is this is beyond the pale. You, you shouldn't be allowing this person in any kind of prestigious placement at all, ever. Right, but 
That's, Even that's Lauren Gilbert here. was really frustrated with Marjorie Taylor Greene. Um, there's an article. I covered it uh, like six months ago on my show because she ideologically is very close with Marjorie Taylor Greene and people perceive them to kind of be like the same type of person. So she didn't like that Marjorie Greene spoke at Nick Fuentes, uh, Fuentes' uh, AFPAC or whatever it's called because that like that association you're not supposed like, to do it in public. You got to yes. do it. Yeah. Like, do you yeah. Yes. Yeah. She does not care yes. about private racism. She's trying to, she's trying to right. real bro that woman. That's all that is. Right. Like, that's all that she's is. Real that's, real she's just that's trying that's to real bro her. Thank you, Gary. Like, thank you. Because I'm like, bro, she's there. But they're all white supremacists. Mm. Okay. That's, think, that's the homie for everybody. Exactly. <laughs> but what really should concern people, this this, I, this really does concern me to see these people. They've given this Marjorie Taylor Green woman a a spot on what a homeland security committee, something like that, knowing that this woman is proudly unabashedly affiliated with with January six, uh, uh, which was mm-hmm. I, just, just even just referring to it as January six. This was an attempted coup on the mm-hmm. United States government. This woman is on a homeland security committee. Everybody yep. even walked out and said, "What the fuck is going on?" You got this George Santos man. They're trying to put him on committees and all that shit. One, y'all don't even know if that's his real name. Two, <laughs> <laughs> you talking about a man it's who lied about all his <laughs> came out? You talking about somebody they didn't link donations from his campaign to the Russian oligarchs? That is an official thing they have come out with and traced that to. It's like baby girl, let's get past the the. Because don't get me wrong, I love Congresswoman AOC. You know, I think she out here, she doing her thing. Well, I love her generally because again, all these people are corrupt. But we are talking about somebody who has been through a lot of things since ascending to Congress. A co guardsman is in jail for trying to murder this woman like she her, her family receiving death threats all type of shit all because she dare stand up as a latino woman and say you know what not today bitch and yet it's such an uneat like it's these like these people this different standard that everybody's being held to in the gop where basically my if i was gop affiliated my ass would walk in there and be like hey y'all i'm gonna sit in on this committee right fast you know don't mind me it this is a spit in the face of every American citizen that these are the people who are making decisions that have real world consequences. And that's really hard for, for a lot of liberals to understand, especially, especially the white liberals, because they typically engage things. I ain't mean no disrespect to y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all play or whatever. But y'all engage things differently than we do. Oh, a lot of this is theory for y'all. This is just theory. This is shit you're reading about in textbooks and whatnot, or that at the most you are seeing other people that you know, seeing people the color that you're friends with and whatnot, endure the consequences of the decisions that these people are making. Yeah, no, that's that's totally true. Mm-hmm. This is All a... By the way... Uh, just play this quickly. This is a, a, a death threat that Ilhan Omar received that's recently. Uh, I'm sure one of many that she has received. Um, but this is how crazy these fucking people are. As he, you fucking cunt, I'll put a bullet in your fucking head and get the fuck out of my country, you cock-sucking bitch. I'll fucking kill you. To review, press zero. To... Right. Yeah. Oh my God, you know what kind of bitch is? Bro. Jesus Christ. Bro, these people are so bitch made. Like, imagine you be like you on somebody voicemail, popping hot cash, talking like, <laughs> like all you know, that. I'm trying to fucking win Dixie to the death threats to people. Like, <laughs> 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 you gotta jump bad. You gotta wait on voice. <laughs> like this nigga say, you punk sucking. That's what you got, bitch. Like that's all you got. Like that's what you thought of. Like you went to all this stuff. All you got, like some of these people, yo, they couldn't survive one day in the Bahamas. Like, a, that's, 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 I'll put a bullet in your head, nigga. I'll put my foot up your ass, and I will fucking. <laughs> but, but let me say this: shout out to my girl, Big Gretch, up there in Michigan, survived two assassination attempts, no winners, all her ops in jail, and she won re-election. Shout out to Big Gretch, <laughs> Gretch in Michigan. No, bro, they won. <laughs> No, they be there like, why are you this mad? Like that, you're you're fucking crazy. Like, what are you? And also, like, your country, get out of my country. Like, nigga, you know how old this fucking world is. You know how old this dirt is. You may be alive seventy two years if you lucky. This nigga, you don't own nothing, broke nigga. Mm-hmm. This is not your street. <laughs> this is not. This is not your country. You don't even pay HOA fees. You own nothing. 
Just ain't you as <laughs> Why are you talking to this woman crazy on a voicemail like that? And you go out of your way to figure out how to get in touch with a congresswoman. That's all you got to say? That's the extent of your threat? Like, that's it? The only way you can engage the base on that side. Because when I think about it, listen, I get a little classy sometimes. I'll go ahead and confess that about myself. Because when it mm-hmm. comes down to it, I think my mama had the best synopsis of racist people. She'd be like, well, fuck them. They broke anyway. Y'all poor. And that's true. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> When it comes to the base, when it comes to the, the true base of the GOP, the only ownership they really feel like they have, the thing that really unites them outside of their skin color is they feel like they have an ownership to this country. That is a deep, no. a mm. deep, deep That's how they appeal. That's how they appeal to like, d- like no offense. Well, we, that's not even our viewing base, so it's all good. That's how they appeal to dumb, broke white people, right? Like, it's like you convince them that's the thing they rally around, like my white, my my white identity and that they should be mine because they otherwise so, other, so fucking upset. So instead of teaching them like oh capitalism and the way these all these rich white people now all these people exploiting you they teach them that black people brown people other these people who are stopping you from having your god given right and they sitting up there mad and that's what they really fucking mad about that's really what the tea is that you sitting your broke ass down there talking shit because you down back because you feel away because imagine seeing a bunch of people who have all this weight on them all these institutional oppressions all these barriers and doing better than you Cause you look stink, cause you ugly, cause you stupid, cause you dumb, and now you mad at everybody but your fucking mother. You need to talk to your parents, cause they were irresponsible, procreating and bringing you onto this world to carry your dumb ass around here talking shit in people's head. And that's what you should be mad at. End, end it here, end the suffering here, and take yourself out the game. That's what you should do. <laughs> I saw someone in your chat. Dave, in Minecraft, we have to add that for TOS. My chat do what? Oh, I saw someone in the chat who was like, the, the username is James R something, and it's like, uh, black people talking about weird names, lol. And I was like, your last name for this is like, it's Dr. Seuss level unpronounceable gibberish. I don't know what you're trying to do, but that's ridiculous. I tell you, they be so mad. I'm telling you, I, I really, they, they be so mad at me on They don't do light bills just sitting on your counter, baby girl. It's like, listen, all that shit, we ain't, paying, we ain't hearing that shit tonight, girl. Pay them overdue light bills. It's something in the red at your house for you to be that mad, girl. You got to get that sorted out. God bless Bless you. Oh, I'm seeing you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see him in the car. You got a mod in the chat. Don't worry. He's already taken care of him. So, uh, there we go. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm not even upset. <laughs> Listen, I'm fried. It's whatever. No, no. I, I, get, rid of these <laughs> people. I get rid of these fucking garbage people. If, if, there's, if there's pieces of shit in my chat, they're not around anymore. Like, they're, their messages, they're either banned or their messages are hidden. Like, I it, saw it, it, earlier it'll, show, it'll show up here, but on the actual YouTube page, it's, it's you know what's it's so funny. I uh, seen his comment earlier when the, another affirmative action attorney in the panel, but you know what's hilarious? I remember once, like, uh, being like at a comedy show and like the comedian tried to crack on me and like, Tried to say I wasn't cute or something, and I was just like, I di- I disagree. Like I'm not even offended. I just <laughs> no, like, no, I read another. You know what's crazy? We're, we're, not, we're not debating right now. <laughs> I 100 percent didn't even realize where I'm fried, and that's just not my testimony. I didn't even realize he is talking about me, even though like logically I'm the only attorney on this panel. But I read that and I was like, What are you talking about? Listen, listen, I am a bitch. I applied to 11 law schools. I got in everywhere. Okay, I chose between full scholarship offers. Y'all better Google me. A nigga is a decorated academic. You can't hurt my feelings. You hate to see it, nigga. <laughs> okay, so yeah, thank you, Block and Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> and we haven't heard from Mudslinger eight eight eight, have we? No, he definitely. Oh, yeah. After I got his ass together, character. I haven't that, touched Mudslinger. Like, he's more funny than anything. Also, was that person also in uh, the YouTube chat? Yeah, like Mud- they were last time. Yeah, yeah. Mudslinger. Yeah. Well, that looks like it's just the average David Dole fan. David, Get the you fuck out of here. You gotta do better. You gotta do better, buddy. Why are you my chat, all these my races? chat is yeah, largely Why are you back to all these races, David? <laughs> I, I uh, want you to compare like all of the YouTube comment sections from all, all our channels. I will come out on top with the best because I, I moderate good, my though. shit. Do better. <laughs> I, get rid of the, I, get, I, I enjoy healthy debate in the chat, but if there's a piece of shit, they're fucking gone. I miss being in Lance. I loved Lance's audience, and then I started. I like. I love David's audience you can, too. You, yeah. can, you can have. I have them all open right now. I love David's audience too. Me, That's why like, I, I, I bring I've never well. seen Vendor's audience. I just have a feeling. I just feel like I wouldn't be loved there. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know this. I don't know this. I like if I had to put my money on it. Like you know, David and Mike's audience. 
both like are always like nice to me, except there's always like eight to twelve haters, like and they're just like, <laughs> like not like comments. It'll just be like the one comment, but the eight to twelve congregate right there being haters. But it's mostly the <laughs> Lance is on is nothing but a sea of love and positivity. Because you know why I figured, but I figured that out. That's because Lance is next, like Lance is a Leo too. Lance is next, like extroverted animated big personality so anybody who watches lance is already used to that type of time and they like it and the the more y'all wind works. down and energy the more, watch me. <laughs> yeah the more y'all wind down and energy the more smoke i get so i know by the time we get to bender i'm getting hated on i'm not getting uh, i'm not going there like, <laughs> the comments good lord i've told i'm told youtube comments are where christianity just goes to die like it's just the worst the worst thing that's ever. true now, i've it's never read the comments of anything I have ever done. I'm, I was told my team told me that article I wrote for the Washington Post. The girls were duking it out or whether or not women were people. I guess I'm never gonna read that. But listen, any comments oh you got to say about me, I'm never gonna read that shit, baby. My my notifications been off on every social media platform. I, you just oh, cause you you okay. have been. Hold on, can we get? Can, can I even tell? No. So y'all don't know this because so y'all side of the internet, right? And I got there late when I realized. So I met Gabrielle doing an episode of uh, Bad Faith, and so I was like, oh, I love Gabby, and then I realized shortly after on Twitter, like, Gabby, are you a black Twitter villain? <laughs> like, I was like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like Gabby has been the make, like, they, like, they, they be jumping on, listen, Gabby is a, <laughs> believe, listen, the black community be, be summoning to get on Gabby's ass. <laughs> so, oh, like, like, I just met these white people, and this is how you gonna do me? Are we gonna cancel you? This is what you gonna do? This you gonna right now? Is the black community gonna come after us as well? <laughs> this is how you, this is how you gonna do me. I'm <laughs> my team, and I do, in addition to being an epidemiologist, I also run a nonprofit. My team has, has described me as a quote timeline terrorist. I reject that entirely. Let me tell you something. <laughs> One thing about me and Black Twitter, I ain't never back down. I think that's really what it is. I'm a formerly incarcerated woman, and my arrest, though nonviolent, nothing drug related, nothing crazy. Was Aww. I don't care. I really do. I wish it was something like real badass, and it wasn't. I took some money, I paid it back. I and in fact, I did a um a special with CBS News last year about CBS More News with Gail King, and I sat down and I talked about it um with the judge who was on my case, and I used that moment to to build up my nonprofit, and so we give scholarships to. For, uh, currently incarcerated women, formerly incarcerated women, the daughters of anyone who's ever been incarcerated. We pay the rents of formerly incarcerated mothers and pregnant women. We, um, I go every month to the prisons down here in Louisiana and donate organic menstrual products. And we do all this because that is everything that I needed back then. And I think Black Twitter's problem with me, and it's really very few people, Olay is exaggerating the shit out of this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the thing about Black Twitter, I think the problem is that I'm an anomaly. Like, especially as women, we don't even associate incarceration with women. And so for me to be someone that's not only, I'm a loud, mouthy Black girl from the South that survives something that's really supposed to be in unsurvivable. It's supposed to be incarceration in this country is supposed to be a permanent scarlet letter on you. It's supposed to be something that you do not overcome, or at least not to the point that I have. I make a hell of a lot of money doing what I do. And I go places. I talk to people about what I is. I have survived. I have no shame in it. And so this is a, inherently a system that is supposed to forever assign shame to you. You're supposed to forever... you. Uh, one in three people, one in three Americans has a criminal record. And you don't really hear people talk about that. But I'm right there. I'm in your face talking about it. Absolutely unabashed. My grandmother said, if you tell the truth, can't nobody hurt you. And I have worn that as a badge of honor. So when you get on Twitter, people look for something to hurt you with. Look for something to say about you. Oh, you did this, 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 this and all that shit. But they know they can't hurt me with that. Because here I am on fucking national news talking about it. Because I don't give a fuck, girl. I love that. <laughs> So it's like, that's my relationship with Black Twitter. At the same time, you know, I'm also out here. I started that scholarship money. I started that scholarship fund with my own money out of my savings account, just handing money to people on the TL. And so how can you really hate on somebody who's giving a bunch of money to people? So it's, I, I exist in this conundrum and they're constantly looking for ways to be like, hey, girl, humble yourself. And I just refuse to. So that's my relationship with Black Twitter. <laughs> I no, I love that. Can you, Gabrielle? Can you talk a little bit about 
What is? I love. I lo- we have sound now. Sorry, what? Yeah, what? A, I, we have a soundboard I, I got a now. soundboard here. There we go. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> that's oh like, my god! I don't use it very gonna... often, but I'm. That's that's impressive. Go, David, You're, yeah, no, I, I fucking go full that. shock shock right now. Get all the things. Bazinga! Wooga! What the fuck? Can we get a Can we get a Tucker Carlson laugh too? Oh my god! I don't want him on here. It's it's very cursed. But I wanted to ask Gabrielle. About uh, you being an epidemiologist, because like over the last couple of years, I mean, we lived through a pandemic and I feel like people in your profession have just been like washed out due to all of the misinformation and how how you navigate that. Because I felt like in 2021, I made it my mission to try to like debunk um, any type of like vaccine misinformation. But it's like it's so I feel like it's so overwhelming. There's so many conspiracies that like it's almost like it's just a lost cause so like can you talk about your experience as an epidemiologist like during a pandemic because i think this is like one of the most fascinating things right now um so i'll say i i got my degree from um tulane university school of public health and tropical medicine roll away we just won the cotton ball um and i graduated right into the pandemic so i finished in oh. and then boom here's all my textbooks come to life and i got <laughs> recruited by the current company that i work for i've been with them ever since so i've only known this capacity at my company because i work for a private organization um and so in the very beginning it really was like a all hands on deck kind of thing like wow this is this is the event of a lifetime we have not had a pandemic of this nature in 150 years like this is something that we've just never seen um and it slowly and i really to me the chasm like the real the real switching point was when the former Surgeon General came out and basically kind of put personal blame on the pandemic, especially for communities Mm. of color. And really, I think that would be the moment where overnight, it it, it just seemed as though the the entire narrative around it changed. Suddenly, we were not a a collective country trying to face this this new and and still very unknown threat. There's still so much that we don't know about COVID. Um, and it just became something that was your personal responsibility. Um, and that's not how public health works. That's not how that, it's just not how it works. I think people are so unfamiliar with public health and, and think of it as the same thing as medicine. Because medicine, you know, we're treating the individual, we're treating this symptom. Public health is supposed to be from a preventative standpoint and our, and our, our infrastructure just completely failed. And so that left room, in addition to all the fear that was surrounding it, that left room for a lot of misinformation. I wrote an article for, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, I was quoted in an article for The Telegraph um, where they were basically reached out to me and they said, hey girl, there's a um, conspiracy theory going around that says that, you know, um, COVID will cause like, you know, your baby to be born with um, microcephaly. And I'm just like, girl, like what? Like these things we didn't even know people were saying, I'm, I, at this point, I may as well wipe my ass with my epidemiology degree because somebody watched two hours of a YouTube stream and said, hey girl, um, well, XOXO lover baby told me this. So yeah, <laughs> on Reddit. And so it's, it's, I understand it. This isn't even the first time this has happened, even throughout history, where where people come through with a lot of misinformation, a lot of vaccine hesitancy, and especially with the black community, we have reason for our Mm -hmm. hesitancy. It is warranted. I will never take that from us. But at the same time, when it comes to COVID, when it comes to the vaccine, we just have to operate in a way that understands that, you know, I am my brother's keeper, that we are really collectively responsible for one another. I think the most recent research that I've read is that um, in terms of people who are vaccinated, because most people have, have pretty much gotten their vaccine, uh, or at least their first one. They may have, they may not have completed the course, but they've got at least one at this point. I think the most recent research I've seen is that for people who have been vaccinated but are not taking any other endeavors, they're, they're not quarantining, they're not wearing their mask and whatnot, they're going to, I think they're estimating you're going to experience COVID at least six times, acute COVID at least six times in one year, and you have a 12% risk of developing long COVID, which is something we absolutely are just in the dark about at this point. Um, and so as as we fight for some kind of normalcy, some kind of endemicness, especially at work, because I'm going to tell you, everybody at work's tired. Everybody, at least in my job, anyway, everybody's tired. We're tired of hearing about it. We're tired of seeing the death rates. We're tired. We're just tired. Everybody's tired. Mm-hmm. The general public's tired. Healthcare, we're, we're all tired. Mm-hmm. But that does not negate 
what has to come next. And that is some kind of, of collective understanding that this is not over yet, that this nonsense, that this is just a cold, this is just a flu, that is not true. And I think at this point, most people should be familiar with that. Because I had COVID once and it, I lost my voice, but I had already been fully vaccinated. My 31-year-old brother absolutely refused to get a vaccine, slipped into a coma within a, in, and died within a week. Oh so, wow, that is the reality that we are all facing. And it does not have to be that way. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, that's horrible. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that what you said about just the failed institutional response, kind of like allowing this room for conspiracy theories to grow makes so much sense because like within like a week or two, like we were seeing segments on Fox News about how, well, you know, we should just sacrifice grandma to the gods of capitalism. Yeah. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but like the uh, uh, the lieutenant I mean, governor, I think I forgot Dan Patrick of um of texas was talking about how like i'm willing to die so you know my my next generations can have a good economy and like it just immediately like there was like a week that we were in this mindset of wow let's flatten the curve and then like that it was just okay you're on your own good luck um and i think and that course, like a failed response from the state really made things so much worse and right before that was denial i mean you had mm -hmm. cable news especially fox news T Tucker carlson sean hannity pretend it wasn't even a thing and then right and then and then it just like flipped and uh, oh now it is a thing but well we got to sacrifice these people like it was mm -hmm. just it was completely uh, uh wild and you know one of the one of the greatest um uh, arguments for people who are anti-vax to get vaccinated is think about who got the vaccine first ron DeSantis in florida specifically gave the vaccine to rich donors of his mm -hmm. like they got in line for i think there was like a rich community where they they were like the first ones vaccinated and they were big supporters of his like when you have the wealthy and those in power ensuring that their friends <laughs> get vaccinated first maybe that's an indication as you should also get the vaccine yeah. i believe it was yeah. the city of philadelphia i'll never forget this story i know it was in pennsylvania so it was either pittsburgh or philadelphia and i really think it was philadelphia it was the city of philadelphia that gave i want to say 1.5 million dollars to some 21 year old college dropout tech bro who said hey girls run me the vaccine i'll run distribution through the city he had scheduled all these partnerships with the black churches, things of that nature. He was going to come down, vaccinate everybody. Turns out homeboy had no plan at all. They gave him these millions of dollars. Homeboy had absolutely no plan at all, was calling his friends down to the churches in these black communities. This is a white man calling his friends, his family down and whatnot, um, shoving vaccines in his pants to smuggle them out the churches. This shit was on the news and everything. It scared the shit out of me because I was like, what mm -hmm. is this? Um, the church is speaking out. The, the the Philadelphia Department of Health is like, hey, girl, our bad. Like, <laughs> and and, send it, and talking about sending homeboy to jail. But at the same time, it's stuff like that that just does not offer any kind of credence to our public health infrastructure in this country. And so I think what scares me the most is that what is going to happen when the next pandemic comes? Because it will. Well, it, we, this, it's inevitable. It's an inevitability that this will happen again. And we were just absolutely unprepared, especially with the way that the way in which we have handled COVID has affected every other effort that we have in terms of in terms of preventing diseases. Uh, 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 meningitis is way up. People aren't getting HPV vaccines anymore. It's just it's affecting the way in which we communicate right. about prevention in the profession. That's why so many people are getting burnt out. And at this point, I really don't know what we do, especially with the, with the CDC being so inconsistent in their messaging, inconsistent in what they're telling the American people to do. This is a hollowed, trusted institution across the world and just kind of readily admitting that they don't know what they don't know what to do at this point. And so we we. We just out here doing the best we can, I think, as a profession, like it's just trying to combat this from all sides. It's so dangerous yeah. right now because we kind of live in this like 
post-truth era where like mm -hmm. everything can be discounted so quickly and you don't need people like the heavy lifting you have to do on one side to do advocacy for health and good health outcomes is insurmountable compared to someone who could just be like yeah but the 5g towers and the magnets and magneto and all that kind of stuff and mm -hmm. all these pundits they're making money off death. You got to remember, like, Joe Rogan has 11 million people who listen to his podcast. I guarantee he's like, been vaccinated multiple times over. Pro I probably a lot of them, like, have, right? And and of those they people that to, he's like, telling to not trust it, like, some of those are going to not get vaccinated, get sick. Some of those people will be hospitalized, and some of those people will die. And, and you're making money off the whole thing. They don't care about people. I don't know what's going to happen, too, when Biden decides, hey, girls... Um, that emergency period is over with. That expires at the end of this month. So mm -hmm. um, I'm told, I read in the news, Moderna is just waiting in the wings like the fucking Grinch to start um, charging, what is it, I think $130 is what it's going to be per vaccine now. So I've seen that number Jeez. floating around. You know what pisses me off so much about that is, again, people going after Pfizer for the wrong reasons or Moderna for the wrong reasons, being like, oh, they're trying to poison us with the vaccine, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, motherfuckers, you can make fun of these companies because they're evil and doing fucked up shit. There's lots of things. There's so many receipts. They they took a whole bunch of taxpayer money, and now they're taking more money to buy and produce the manufacture the vaccine and sell it back to you. They spend more on advertising than they do on R and D. Go after them for real shit. When you go after them for cartoon Mickey Mouse stuff, then people on the sidelines are like, "Oh, okay. Well, I guess it's because the vaccine's evil." And it's going to yeah. be the, the issue is that the vaccine is is distributed through capitalism as opposed to being a just a a right. I mean, there is public mm -hmm. investment into well, the research behind States the vaccine, right? Money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that the public funded the research into the vaccine and then these massive companies benefit off of it. Like that's that's the criticism there. The criticism isn't the medicine's bad or the vaccine's bad. The criticism is why are they benefiting when the taxpayers are the ones that funded the research into the medicine? Yeah, that's the conspiracy. Like you don't have to yeah. concoct these uh, ideas that, oh, well, ivermectin works instead or yeah. the vaccine is poison. Like the conspiracy <laughs> is obvious. It's, it's the green. <laughs> yeah, but yet, like these motherfuckers who push like ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine, still like are. they're doing victory laps more. now. He's yeah, still doing it. He still, yeah, they're all. He, he was quoting Marjorie Taylor Greene as the source. He's like, I was right. I've been proven right about all this. Like, meanwhile, yeah. criticizing, <laughs> criticizing big pharma who's making the money off that too. Like, it's it's all so freaking stupid. It, it feels so yeah. hopeless. <laughs> And it does feel hopeless. There's some things that just cannot be penetrated. I really can't tell you how many times I've been told. Uh, in the early, in the, in the early day, I think I probably stopped trying to. I'm not gonna lie, because I'm I don't work for the Department of Health. Okay, that's that. And I work for a private company, and I work with a team of epidemiologists and physicians. So I'm mostly tracking, like, when it comes to chronic or infectious diseases, I'm tracking like who this is affecting. I'm tracking the distribution and determinants of these diseases and what's going on. And for that, I'm a bit grateful because I've been. I, I, I never forget that this data that I'm touching is real people, but I've also been kind of insulated because in the early days of the pandemic, we were reaching out to people. Like we were talking to people. I had talked to people who um, like called them on the phone. And I remember one woman had told me she had just gotten the ashes of her mother who had died of it. Like I think like two hours before I had called her. So that was really intense for me, but I will say we're at this point now, there's some things I just cannot penetrate. I, I've been told so many times, oh, well, you know, you listening to the white man's logic duh, 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 and all that. Oh, God. Oh. Well, hey, you know how people well, sometimes I want to get my I want to get my hair done in Harlem. I went to get my hair done in Harlem during the pandemic and I thought I was gonna kill myself listening to that conversation. I swear there was a man and it yo, I was I was like my chest was in there like dead ass talking about how it gonna turn you into a robot and this I'm looking at him like <laughs> And I'm looking at him in his eye, just trying to like look for the truth. Like this nigga believes this. Like, <laughs> like I don't, I don't. Like you can't even. What do you say to people talking this shit? Like you can't even. It's very and, hard talking to anti vax Like that, that's what I like. It's it's because you don't want to scare them away, but you also don't want to sit there and take their bullshit. <laughs> it's just mm -hmm. like you have to find a happy medium. Like how do you? I, I, I want to you plant the seeds. No, I want to stand away. Just fuck up my face talking this bullshit. Well, please. it depends. It depends who it is in your life, right? Like if, if it's like a family member exactly. or something. No, no, that's exactly it. Did you know have some boxers in your family? Because I was shocked to find I listen. Bahamians can be they're very stubborn people, and if it, and if it's good, it's good. But if it's bad, boy, is it bad? And I remember 
getting on the phone fully prepared to have to go to war with my mommy. I said, oh, this woman could be on some, there could be people in my family talking a bunch of fuck. I went on the phone for war. And my mom's like, nope, everybody, nope, even your cousin Terrence, everybody got vaccinated. And I was like, Americans are a lost people. I was like, yeah. all, 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 all of the worst members of my family, all the likely targets, everybody, cross class, cross but everybody. That is what David said, That's and what you're saying too, that works together. That is what David just described, of, and what you just described, of people talking to each other, it has to be, of it having to be someone you know. That is the nature of public health, is all of us being like, hey girl, this is something good for you. My grandparents, especially my granddaddy, and they've been through war and all his and I remember when the pandemic first started, he said, What, you gonna be scared all your life? He wasn't mind you, his granddaughter is an epidemiologist. He wasn't trying to hear none of that, wasn't trying to wear no uh -huh. mask, none of that. But it came down to where I just I, the, I sat them down and I was like, Granddaddy, I'm your I'm your granddaughter. I am your grand I do this for a living. I, I clock into work every day. I look at this, I see this. I would never steer you wrong. Do you think I would tell you something that would harm you in any way that I would suggest this to you? No. And that got him vaccinated. They got my grandmother vaccinated. She was like, you know, well, Mike, yeah. we got to we got to we got to if Gabrielle's saying this, then we probably need to check it out. Um, when it comes down to, to even the most staunch people who refuse to, that's going to come down to homeboy at the barbershop being like, well, you know, I went ahead and got the vaccine. I'm fine. You know, you see me in the flesh, somebody that they trust. Oh, oh, well, you know, my coworker got it and they seem fine. It that's what it takes. Oh, my pastor say he got it. And so he went, he told the church it was cool. So we got it. Like it it really takes that community effort. That is the nature of public health. And we have failed in that regard for a majority for a lot of reasons, depending on depending on, you know, what party lines, all that kind of stuff. But the is public health. It's a pol I mean, it's a policy. It's a policy choice. The government made a mm -hmm. policy choice. They, it, it's not like these things came out of thin air. The public narrative on the pandemic had everything to do with what we were being fed, mm -hmm. and there was a point in the beginning when, because they were still afraid about themselves, you know what I mean? When they when they got they they got terrified for themselves, they got serious. It was lockdown. It was this. It was blah 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 blah. But once they started trying to, you know, feeling like they knew a little bit more, once they stopped feeling any personal fear, it started to get further out, the more it started being not everybody is sick and everybody is panicking and everybody is in the hospital, the more it was, oh, it's disproportionately affecting black people and this, this is the next thing you started seeing the change of like, all right, well, fuck it, open up the stuff, let's make money, da da da, da. Yeah. and that's how it was, and I think that's just the truth, right? We're being dishonest if we pretend America cares about mass death or death or mm -hmm. people or anything like that. This is one of the richest nations on earth with all kind of homeless people, one of the largest wealth disparities, like, come on, we have like Look at it. Two million people incarcerated. This is not a place that gives a flying fuck about people. That's just, that's I, just real tea. I got to yeah. admit, though, like at, at the beginning of the pandemic, I, like a part of me thought, hey, this is finally going to open people up to the idea of universal health care. The, the, oh, they're going to realize so that people need oh, to have... <laughs> that we're all going to come together and realize, oh, this is terrible. All the people dying. We got... We got something about this, and then this like it went the honestly, complete opposite direction. <laughs> mm -hmm. Honestly, that is a very logical conclusion, but, and I'm, I'm going to say this, too. I, Believe it or not, I feel like you're right. Like, that's a very, yeah. And somehow I feel like I never saw that be like a talking point for real. Uh, it absolutely was for me. Was? Like, I didn't, I don't know, like, in your space. This in my space, it was. And we were trying uh, to. That, that didn't make it out, baby girl. That didn't it make did, it out. It didn't make it out. <laughs> we tried. We tried. Let me tell you something. I may, I may make a lot of money, but let me tell you who don't have 75,000 bands for a six day on average hospital say, which is what COVID was giving people. I don't have that girl. I can't do the medical debt game. So I masked to this very day. To this mm -hmm. day, I will have I will be N95 down, vaccine down, whatever, whatever strain you come out with. Because at the end of the day, Americans function as if we had already have universal health care. We we go through life and our everyday life as if you know, we're going to be straight if anything happened to us. If I twist my knee, I'm not going to the hospital. I would drive myself. If I had a bullet wound, I'd drive myself to avoid that $1,500 ambulance fee. Mm -hmm. In fact, the, the level at which I've, and I've lived through medical debt. My father died of cancer. We've lived with the best insurance in the world, military insurance, American military insurance and still died in debt. So most, most Americans are in medical. Most debt actually in America. Most is debt is American. Yeah. Most mm -hmm. debt. 
And yet that with with gun violence being being the cause of death for the majority of kids now, we still function with the majority of people who survived these shootings going into uh, medical debt, medical bankruptcy. Um, I think sixty five thousand dollars or so on average, depending on if you went straight to inpatient or if you went through the emergency room, all that kind of stuff. It's like we function as a society as if we already have the safety nets and we I don't. Didn't... I'd never thought about that. That like the people in shootings, mass shootings, they they all get burdened with tons of medical. Oh, they've medical done the studies on that. Everybody forgets the survivors. Everybody forgets the people mm. who survived this kind of stuff. So barbaric. That's yeah, so barbaric. cruel. And I see it every day. That's, that's the data. That's that's the consequences of data. Knowing terrible shit about the world. <laughs> one of one of my mentors has been battling cancer for like more than 10 years he keeps getting a different kind of cancer every time he beats one you know another like oh for 10 years and the amount of medical debt he is in and like watching somebody it has been surreal to watch somebody literally think one that they are going to die like you know what i mean they 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 think death is inevitable and they are fighting to stay alive but they the whole time of life is being in a constant state of stress about the amount of debt it is putting his family in and not knowing how he's going to pay for that and that's insane when you think about it. like that's something when you see that i think like I remember, and obvi like my obviously my family is in the Bahamas, but is even worse, right? Like it's even worse. What America's medical, it, it, I can't even tell you. In the Bahamas, we don't have that at all. And I remember my Grammy was in the hospital, and the doctor came to the door with the bill, like the bill to charge my grandma. You know, my grandmother that is that stage four cancer, jaundice, and they charging her for changing her gown. And you know what I mean? And this is the next thing, or this bill has to be paid or we won't be doing this procedure. And I remember the the, the, the sickness of realizing, like, like I remember the, the feeling I felt. I'm like, I can't even think about this. I have to put this in the recesses of my mind because I don't know how to feel about this other than to want to blow up the earth. Like, I like this is insane. Like, this is, and you realize, like, people, people lose their life every day. Every day people die or people have to make the decision or come to terms with the fact that they're, they're going to die because they can't afford to live. You know what I mean? Like they did, they just can't, they can't afford it. They can't, they, they don't have the means for it. And to live in a nation that like prides itself and lords itself over the rest of the world as this superpower and this civilized nation and all the money and all the Reese's and all that. And just to be making policy choices to say, fuck people because humanity just doesn't matter to know better and to just make decisions that I actually don't care. That's some painful shit. Cause the reality is like death is the end, right? Like death is final. It don't matter. There's nothing that can be said. There's nothing you could do about the fact that people are just losing people every day on this earth, just because people are greedy in the limited time in the limit. And when you think about it, right in the limited space in the limited time you have to be on this earth and you choose to just hoard, like you just want to hoard wealth. Why? Like you can't even take it with you, but you will, you will shorten other people's life. You will ruin the quality of people's life just because you feel like you need to have infinite and you need to have excess. That's some selfish shit to walk around a place like that. And people will say the most depraved shit and they justify it and they defend it and they just make conscious decisions to be intellectually dishonest because that fuels just a, a, a system of greed. But they're yeah. operating in theory, though, Olay. They're operating in theory. I remember in grad school reading an article for a class that talked about this phenomenon that Americans have where some, so when they're, I mean, truly desperate, truly desperate people being willing to um, function on the myth. And it is a myth that if you go to jail, the state will cover your health care. Let me tell you how not true that is. And Olay, you follow me on Twitter. I have talked about this. I've been everywhere talking about this. So my birth mother... Um, gave me away at birth due to her to total strangers. I, I think I say I'm adopted just to kind of keep it cute and save the explanation. But she gave me away to strangers when I was uh, born, um, and she was in and out of jail on her longest and her la what would be her last prison sentence. She had been in jail for years at that point um, and developed. Um, well, I'll say this: so she had been in she had been in jail. And had developed abdominal pain over uh, just severely, severely increasing over time. Because I think the average time you'll see a doctor in jail, aside from your intake, is about maybe every three to five years. Like they don't, you're not getting screened for anything. And so the Texas Bureau of Prisons was giving her Tylenol for what ended up being stage four metastatic colon cancer. And so rather than treat it in any way, especially something as expensive as cancer, as, as resource intensive as cancer, they gave her what is known as a compassionate release and just sent her home to die. 
And I remember we as a family, me and my my four other biological siblings, of course, we sued over that over many years and were able to settle. And even then, even on the back end, Medicaid said before you are cut a check or any of you get a check, Medicaid has to be paid back. So there's wow. no escape from it, girl. Like we, <laughs> there's no. That's that's one of the Jesus biggest propaganda America has perpetuated about its criminal system. That's why I hate when people say like, "Oh, you do the like, uh, you do the crime, you do the time," as though that's the exchange, as though like that's it. Instead, but they take the the vast majority of everybody in the U.S. criminal system is literally underneath the poverty line. Most people's pre arrest make less than twelve thousand dollars annually. But do you know how much money people's uh incarcerated people's loved ones own in fines and fees from them being in prison? Twenty seven point six billion fucking dollars. That is how much money they they literally take. They take and they prey on the poorest fucking communities and then they saddle them with fines and make it so they will never fucking escate poverty. It is sick. It's you absolutely sick. It's a war on the poor. Yeah. You will pay, yeah. Yeah. pay for healthcare in prison. Straight up war on the poor. Yeah. 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 That was some heartbreaking shit. Yeah, our system is barbaric. It's irredeemable. And just, I, I was one of the things that I talked about today, it's a video going up tomorrow, is they did like a stupid ass vote to condemn socialism. Uh, Kevin McCarthy was asked about how, you know, oh, well, are you going to look into DirecTV dropping Newsmax? And like all that's happening. And then I saw a headline from Truth out how one in eight children are starving in the United States because the universal free uh, school lunch program that was put in place during the pandemic had expired. And it's like, it got me so enraged because all of this horrible things is going on, unhoused people, children literally starving. And they're like, they're focusing on this dumbass like shit, like a socialism vote. Like it's just, it's, it's not only barbaric, it's like, it's almost a, like a fucking parody. Like it's so cartoonishly cruel. Like you can't even put it into words. And by the way, I think over a hundred Democrats voted with Republicans on that against socialism, <laughs> it, including Ro Khanna. Yeah, Ro Khanna. Yep. Only about Ro Khanna. Peace and Ruben garbage. Gallego running as the progressive against Kirsten Cinema. Also, my favorite one. I, I did a video about this. Hakeem Jeffries did an amazing rousing speech where he talks about how this vote to you know condemn socialism. It's fake. It's phony. It's completely pointless. We know that this is them just hiding their agenda. What does he do? He votes with them after he making. Voted, he voted with them. He voted with them after <laughs> condemning it. Let me pause right quick. He voted with them. With the Republicans to condemn socialism. Yep. Socialism. We're gonna cancel him today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm just gonna tell you right now. I saw somebody say it earlier in the chat, but I was like, I know what they talking about. Now. I ain't going out of my way to get in this. But now yeah. that it's expressed to me, I cannot stand for this bullshit. No, he has to be canceled. This it's segment. like a is it not like a cruel fucking joke? Like this country I is a fucking like, cruel joke. It gets on my nerves. Like, and this is this is why, like, anytime anybody talks to me and it's every day someone comments on me with something about politics and i'm like i have no political aspirations because i would be so fucking sick of myself like i'd be so sick of myself like to be to like think about all the shit that's happening in this country like all of the shit that's happening in this country and you've ascended me all the way to this, this position to sit in the room with a bunch of glorified fucking fools but all these purport, like in serious titles and this is the shit they talking about they doing theoretical shit for intellectual fun and fancy real shit happening you know people dying all over the country people need all kind of shit all kind of shit they doing and they talking about condemning socialism can you can, can like can you condemn these nuts go do something sensible <laughs> like what what the fuck bro you giving i just like it's just it's just it's un it's it's unreasonable how unserious is like oh my god i am from a little island nation and we act more fucking serious than this about productive like this like n nigga has is nothing is nothing sacred this ain't congress like what 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 like what you can't get up you couldn't get up at fucking walmart in the minute of walmart work meeting talking about less condemned target they'd say get this <laughs> Sit fucking down. Like, they wouldn't allow that shit at your regular job. You could not get up and just be like, hey, let's have a vote. I think Hakeem Jeffrey, and I've met this man before. We took a cute <laughs> picture. We took a cute little selfie. Um, I think by nature of his position that he has ascended to, he has to be um, neutral by nature. This is not a defense of him. I don't defend any of these people. Trigger warning, I hate everybody. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to say, you know, by I'm not expecting no kind of, you know, like just movement work from this man. I think this man is in this position to retire. I feel like maybe 10 years from now, he might give the Oval a try. Like he's here 
just to be here. Um, I think that, you know, hey, it's, it's for him. I think it's, it's a, Hey girls, whatever you want to do, whatever y'all like, if y'all like it, I love it from him. I don't really get him strongly on any, any kind of um, issue. I think he, but he's, he, he likes to speechify in politic. And I think that that's really all he's here for. I don't expect too much from him. I know. And I, mm-hmm. and I mean like, and same. And I also like, I try not to, I don't have much to say when it comes to what the, what the Democrats and the Republicans are doing on their day to day in in there, just because it feels like, like, I feel like if it's like the Game of Thrones, I'm, it's not like how the Game of Thrones is a show and I'm watching and I know what the fuck is going on and what the behind the scenes is and stuff like that to really be able to like saliently com- like comment strongly like it should be this, should be that. I don't know what the fuck is the chips going on. I don't know what y'all really are about. I don't know what the T is. Like, I don't quite know. So I often don't have like, I'm like, I don't Whatever, like, whatever. I always respect him, though, for coming out publicly saying... Um, on January 6th, he'd have killed absolutely anybody to make sure he was going to go home. He came out and said that. And he, he, he turned to his homeboy and was like, listen, I'm, been, I'm ready to do whatever. Like, oh, you, you mean the, uh, the insurrectionist? Like, yeah, the, yeah, I, 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 was, I was ready. To, listen, I was ready. I was waiting to see the cable cut. You know, the, 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 the colored strip. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the, 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 way, the way I was waiting, the way I was waiting to see that. Um, we apologize for interrupting this program. <laughs> <laughs> ah, listen, I was so fucking ready for them to. You remember in the um in the the season opener out a lot, like when they um when they finally when when the when the um. Oh my God! The Night King and the the White the Night Walkers, or whatever, finally made it to to the north in in the last season, and it's just dark. You know what I mean? Go, like I was fully waiting. I was like, "Hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey America, you 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 got this!" And like when and when them niggas came out alive, I was like, "Hey, yo, they let white people do anything." <laughs> I was well, like, it, took, it, took so it was insane too. what they got away with. Going on. Yeah, I was like, "Wait, are they are they friends? Are they letting them inside?" What is? Yeah, what? They, they, were, yeah they were letting them in. The it was all crazy. Like, yeah, that's, that was. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what am I seeing right now? <laughs> Let me tell you. The fact that like white people couldn't even make trees and look cool, like that's the thing. <laughs> oh, I don't care, and I know you said it before, but anytime you do an interaction, I cannot get over them scaling that fucking wall. <laughs> like you have to see, oh, you have to find a video of him falling. Yeah. Like, where they help him up and he drops anyway. <sighs> yes, <laughs> please. Like, we have to play that. that. We have yeah, to play that. that. Play that. But, but here's my thing, you find bro. I'll post, I'll play. These Mission Impossible ass niggas, they were stairs. That wasn't as cool. That was trying to climb the oh wall. God. <laughs> they were stairs. They were fucking stairs. I, I never got that. Why were they trying to scale the walls? Like, bro, what were you thinking? Me, a, a like, few so ago, many people trying to scale the walls. A, a few months ago, I went home to the Bahamas, right? And I'm on the I'm on the banana boat. With my like my niece and her little friends, they all like little teenage, but everybody, everybody taller than me. So I'm thinking, you know, we close enough back to the shore, you know, I know this. I'm like, fuck it, I just, I'm just gonna, you know, jump off, right? Like I'm gonna st- listen to me <laughs> the way, the way I was like. <laughs> Like, please, I'm dying. And meanwhile, the like children, my niece and her friends, jump off and they walk to the shop. I'm like, oh, man, like, ah, ah. <laughs> so David, you wrong. Not everybody got away with it. They definitely um well, they, uh well, the back back. Back. No. The sky. All right. They, they, got, they got all <laughs> all the wounds present got it. Yeah, they got they got all the black people that was oh about the longest princesses. Listen, let me tell you something. That's what I was just talking today with my best friend. We was just talking about how the price of Kunin is way too high. It's way too high. Like it's not free. It is not free. The price of Kooning is steep, nigga. Steep. <laughs> <laughs> you know how fucking upsetting that is, yo. Listen, that's the funniest. Fucking! Sh- I so love when coons get a taste of their own medicine. Like, hey yo, you know, you know, in your heart, you and them commit the exact same fucking crime. <laughs> they just <laughs> drove to these motherfuckers. Oh, not Olay. Like, we abolitionists, not Olay. Like, come on now, we abolitionists. Homeboy didn't even get. <laughs> he gotta go sit down for six years. He gotta go do a six year. Fuck that nigga. Cooning is a criminal. <laughs> like, cooning is a 
fucking sin in my book, son. Like, <laughs> I have no sympathy for that. So like, but yes, play this video. Oh, That's my Don favorite. Donald James, I, I get it. I, I just don't know if it's appropriate for me to laugh at this moment. I was like, oh no, I know exactly what all this means. Word, word for word. <laughs> Smile no strongly. <laughs> the past. Good for you, Lance. This is my favorite video. Hold on, hold on. Y'all get ready. I love this video. This Let me know if you can hear the sound. I think. Yep. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. This is the this is the Zelda meme version of it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, just wonderful. I, I don't know why I never so noticed good. it before, but I was watching it and I I got flashbacks to that uh, that scene from what was it Scary Movie or Scary Movie Two. Where the guy reaches down, and he's like, "Take, take my, my little arm. hand, take, yeah, take, my hand. Like, take my little hand, or whatever it was." <laughs> That's my favorite shit. Though. Them climbing, that, them climbing that wall is one of the funny. Yo, that was an exceptionally funny day on Black Twitter. Like you have no, I was laughing like scream, laughing in my house, like crying real tears, like. <laughs> Them on that, listen, them on that fucking wall. <laughs> like, I, the only yeah. thing funnier is if it was zoomed out and you see the stairs right beside him. And he's just like. <laughs> yeah. But y'all know, but y'all know, I can't even, I can't even laugh at it too hard. Because you know your homegirl with the chopped, uh, with the chopped and said that if she had led it, she said that shit on Christmas, like two, a month and a half ago. She said that if she had led it, it had been armed. So we got that wow. yeah. the next right. time. Yep. Wait, who say what? Marjorie yeah. Taylor Green. She said that. She said not yeah. if she let it, it would have been armed. So we got that to look mm -hmm. forward to. Girl. Let me tell, mm -hmm. tell you something. And like that's and this is why you can't have me in charge then because the nigga was me. Oh my god! I don't let the chopper sing. What you talking about? Like, like, what is going on? What are you, what are y'all talking about? Like the fact that <laughs> to be scaling the fucking wall. I'd have been there, like. <laughs> 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 One surprising thing to me was that it it wasn't as armed as I thought it would be. Like it, it turned out that some of them did have weapons and uh, some of them were like in trucks and stuff. But like I, I'm kind of surprised they didn't pull anything out. Like while they were <laughs> jumping in there, like that's considering mm -hmm. like these were the people that were storming. You know, the Trump. And they thought they were in a the... Marvel movie too. Or, or My like, favorite said, part. Game of, Thrones, Game of Thrones makes more sense because they were charging the wall. Right. Yeah. And there's a lot of added like additional uh, little bits that just really heighten how everything thing was like for example the people who uh didn't even know where they were where some of them thought they were scaling like the white house walls or something <laughs> rubbing doo-doo on the walls oh they were rubbing doo -doo on the wall. why did they do that why do people do that <laughs> like, what are, are you seven years old why are you rubbing fucking shit on the walls what is wrong with you that's so funny dick riding donald trump like that's so crazy yeah. that you do that's so people. sad imagine so i get sad. out my fucking bed like what you'll do for people is nuts. Let me tell you, in college, I remember waiting on the line. I had tickets. Obama was coming to my college to talk, and I remember waiting on the line for like two hours or something. And I was literally, I was like, I don't want to see this nigga that bad. Like I remember by the time, <laughs> by the time he came, but I could not tell you what Obama said because all I was thinking, I was like, this is nigga not Beyonce. I know I'm not out here two hours in this line. You think there is any fucking politician? There's anybody who didn't write thriller or do some craze that I am gonna get get out my bed. Let me get my bag and fucking travel and scale a wall. You you scaling a wall for Donald fucking Trump? Some people traveled across the country like they they came from all states just to do that. Like <laughs> that is like you're a loser. You're a loser. Like no, you like if if I do that, I'm gonna ask them. Like that's just me trying to get put down in an exciting way. Like I clearly decided I no longer want to live no more, <laughs> and I'm hoping I'm hoping they do it for me so I can go with a bang. Cause ain't no fucking reason for you to keep me on this earth living like that. You don't have shit to do. 
Like, how do you how do you dick suck for that long? You was you was sucking Donald Trump dick that whole time to travel across the country the whole time. You felt it just as passionately. Like, that's crazy, son. No, and, he, and, and he oh. wasn't even there. It's like, here, you guys. You I will guys always be. Yeah. I will always be so mad that the Secret Service didn't let him go. I know. <laughs> I know. Can you imagine? Because oh. you know he, you know he would have been all like he would have seen himself in these Hollywood movies. He would have been leading the charge, but then right yes. before the gate, he would have stopped and said, "All right, all of you, go!" <laughs> he would have yeah. Standing back, yeah. making sure he's not getting in trouble and getting his hands dirty. Oh, but he would have been standing out there, like acting like he was in a movie. He would have been like with the big arm movements and everything. I'm totally Fireworks. picturing him. Right. Looking at it that way. Okay, well, I mean, yeah. in the background. Yeah. My favorite Donald Trump moment is when he got COVID and they and they got him out there. Oh, they- yeah. <laughs> He's like <laughs> gasping for breath. <laughs> I almost went there for him. You can see it in his face. He's like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like sat in there and I was like, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Not supposed to find this funny. I remember doing a video about it. It was hilarious. Same, like he was yeah. like struggling. That I was feel awesome. great. <laughs> yeah. They thought he was out of here on that. They thought he was out of here on that. They thought he was out of here on that. They thought he was out of here. I'm sure that I'm toxic lit. masculinity. Okay, that's toxic masculinity. You shouldn't have to pretend when you're that bad that you're okay. All it's okay to be sick, <laughs> dudes. My dudes, not it, say not, this not, not, the not it's okay to be sick and be and be uh, or or be weak or whatever. Like diseases take you over. You know. Really, really, no, the, the best, the best Trump moment, without a doubt. It's, it'll always be in my head. I, people always post the clip online, and it makes me so fucking happy because it's so ridiculous. When he pretends he just learned about RBG's death. He goes. <laughs> yeah. she goes. He goes. She, she just died. Wow, I didn't know that. Oh, You're telling me this now for the first time. First time. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. I was like, Wait, oh yeah, that was funny. That's Hang funny. on, I, I, this is my favorite Trump moment. I'll share the screen because I feel like this is by far the greatest tweet of all time. Um, let me. I, you have to get the visual for it too. Otherwise, it's just not. Hang on, I'm trying to pull it up. Okay, okay, let me... Uh, this is just a banger. Barney Frank looked way, disgusting. Funniest. Nipples protruding in his blue shirt before Congress. Very, very <laughs> disrespectful. Nipples <laughs> protruding. <laughs> Nipples protruding. Like, I just read it in his like, voice. Nipples protruding. <laughs> A Mickey Mouse <laughs> operation, son. <laughs> That's fucking crazy, son. Yo, Trump, it's crazy that don't nobody beat him up. Like, me personally, <laughs> I swear to God, if I was in Congress, I was whooping his ass because his pride wouldn't even let him tell nobody. So I was going to fuck him up. <laughs> like, I was going to say, hey, I can't even get threats up, though. Uh uh-uh, uh, they just showed up at your mama house or something over that man. They ride for that man. They ride for that man. One thing about his people, they ride for him. And he got he got some shooters to the left of him, I tell and to the right. Okay. You was in Congress, you wasn't gonna sneak Trump. If you had you was, you was, if you was one of them, if you was you wasn't gonna sneak Trump. I ain't, gonna sneak Trump. I ain't the type of If you, of talk, if you talk about my nipples are protruding in Congress, very, very <laughs> I'm, I'm like on God, I'm sneaking you. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> are you fucking crazy? I'd punch that nigga in the neck. <laughs> 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 You're not gonna hold me in Congress. <laughs> like, hell no. Like, what? And you look the way you look talking about what's disrespectful. Not, uh, um, no, not looking. You're not, you look like a deep fried tangerine. I'm fucking him up, bro. What are you talking about? I'm frying here, his ass. No, I'll tell you what that is. I'm frying his ass. Let Cause baby girl, not with that comb over you're not. Not with that comb over you're not gonna do that over here, baby girl. Not today, not tomorrow, not yesterday, not no more. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah. <laughs> she just died. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know that. I just uh, you got her the first time. <laughs> you what the fuck was that? <laughs> What else can you say? She was an amazing woman. Was- the fact that Elton John's going on in the background, oh, like I that's what it. makes the cl- that's what makes the clip for me. Like that's just <laughs> that now for the first time. I'll never get over that. That line you're telling oh me that now God. for the first time.
<laughs> also, I know, um, fuck Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Trigger warning, I hate Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, yes. Fuck Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Uh, trigger warning for, your, for all y'all in the chat, for all y'all multiple channels, fuck Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And I, and oh, I mean, you know, everything. They all agree. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, <laughs> you're, you're preaching to the choir. I love it. Whenever somebody it says it, I just get excited. <laughs> I, just, I always tell us, I was like, I don't know about, I don't know who they people are. I gotta, so don't put trigger warning. I hate her. And I'm telling y'all, she's slow roasting, inhale, listening to Yin Yang Twins on repeat. Fuck <laughs> The fact that she stayed, the fact that she stayed on the bench, she stayed on the bench when she knew she was coming to like the end of her years. While Obama was still like, she could have left. Obama could have put someone else in there. I had like a, but the fact that she stayed in because she just wanted to stay in until she died. So incredibly oh, selfish. And officiating marriages for rich people during the pandemic with no masks. Do you remember that picture? Cancer. <laughs> yeah, with cancer. Yeah, with cancer. She just insane. Go completely I undermining just, I just the entire system. Muted. I just realized I muted. My my fault. Yeah, y'all are very white people are very late to RBG. If you was actually in law school and read any of them opinions, RBG was progressive when it came to white women shit that had something to do with her. She was talking big fucking shit and everything else. Okay, mm -hmm. no, she was the one writing the sunlight, um, sunset provision or whatever, and all the shit in the affirmative action cases. She talked mad shit. Okay, she was. You know, but fun fact, my my friend Shauna is the founder of the notorious RBG movement, wrote the book, um, and all of that. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's wild. Oh, no. It was it was one of those people you could never go after though. Like if you went after um if you went after RBG, people would get really mad because it was like, but she's like she's uh, such a, a consummate uh, feminist icon, and she's like she's laid down the groundwork and stuff like that. Like I, I would get a lot of pushback if I ever said anything. Like you know, online at first, and then slowly See? more and more people. That's the peril of the white Twitter. You could say all that because you ain't coming. Are you talking about when she died? It wasn't even safe on black Twitter. Even my. <laughs> My friend John <laughs> was like, like, yeah, it didn't, it didn't age well, you know. <laughs> glass up. Absolutely no. not. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, she was. I remember she was like talking shit in one interview about Colin Kaepernick. Like they asked her about it. And she said, oh, he's an oh, idiot. It's like started. you're a Supreme Court justice. He's exercising his First Amendment right, and you're calling him an idiot or something. Like I'm also, paraphrasing what you said. Like also the ego on her. Well, the their feud goes her. back to their college days when they play hoops together. <laughs> 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 oh, it's like Colin Kaepernick, right? That's bad. That's football. I don't even know sports, man. I'm no, done. I don't either. <laughs> you were so close. The ego on these people is insane because there's many fucking people that are in this country, and for you to truly believe that there's nobody fucking else in the United States of America that could do your job, that you need to fucking die on the bench to the whole country's inconvenience because you just can't fucking retire. Like, who the fuck you think you is? Like, how did you mm -hmm. get to think your opinion is that goddamn important? That was some fucking selfish shit. And you got everybody kissing the ring, girl. Like you, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Like, what else do you need? Like, what? What do you? What else? When is enough? Enough for the ego? What do you need? You are at the end of your life, girl. You can call this shit a job well done. You beat capitalism. You beat sexism, bad girl, to the best of your ability, girl. You are. You have done it, girl. So now, what else do you need? What else do you need? Right. I mean, and these people are millionaires. Like, Diane Feinstein is married to a billionaire, and she still won't actually say whether or not she's going to step down. Like, she said that, oh, well, I'll, I'll announce what I'm going to do when it comes to re-election in 2024 in 2024. It's like, you're a thousand years old, and you have millions of dollars. How do you not just, like, fuck off forever on some private island on your yacht? I, I just, I genuinely don't understand these people. Feinstein has has I mean I think she has dementia right like she she's completely oh, true yeah so like there's been multiple there's been, there's been countless stories about like from Democratic other Democratic senators leaking this these stories to the press about how they'll have a conversation with her and she will literally forget like five minutes later that a topic that she just brought up like mm -hmm. so they'll, they'll have these repeat conversations with her and she's been this way for like five years. And yeah. so, that type of shit, I'm not trying to hear that, David. I'm gonna tell you why that type of shit, all that we leaking this shit to the press and whatnot, bitch. That is your colleague. You the one in position. You leaking to the press for what? You the one in position to make some shit happen and make some shit. Yeah, no, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? What is this? Because in real life, they're not there. None of them people are there to do anything. This is this is establishment. This, this spot is there. They're there for, for for money, power, and ego. 
Yeah, but since them all about all ass white people have been there for the longest and having that shit, clearly they have decided that's her spot. So the people who leaking the stories, clearly they do not have the, you know what I mean? It's gonna be some kind of. of They're afraid of any backlash on them for being ageist or something. When it's no, it's about like, should the senator be a senator when you can't even function as a person? Like it, it, it's yeah. If you bad enough to be in Congress, I feel like what you scared of the backlash. Baby, come whoop my ass. I'm con- like, what are you talking about? No, they be, about? No, they be scary. I work, I like, I whenever I talk to, you know, through teams, whatever, and da da da, and helping them, they be scary. Like, they be very scary of anything. Like, they want, they only want to do things that they think only 190% of people are going to yeah. be in favor with. The way mm-hmm. they are, separate, bro, it's crazy. Like, that's why they live in fair being ratioed and shit. Like, think about that. Like, they got real shit and real problems down there. Like, that's the kind of stuff they, they scary. They're pussy. That's really what it boils down to. Yeah. It, it, in, but in reality, I think if a lot of them like did speak up, I think it would help them politically. Yeah, they're so afraid of, of even taking that slight risk that they won't take any of those risks. But if, you know, I don't know, if, if Katie, Katie Porter, who's running for, for Senate now and going to be running against Feinstein, if, if she came out and was like, I don't think Feinstein is, is fit for office, I think it would help her in California. I think people in California be like, this is someone who's speaking the truth. Yeah, we like, oh, she's divulging this information. Katie Porter has a good, you know, record in terms of uh, her her time in Congress fighting against massive corporations and and greedy people. Like that, she she has built up that 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 support base already. That, that you know, spilling people. some information on Feinstein, I don't think it's gonna hurt her. I agree with the public, but what happens is, I believe again, back to the whole original. We don't know the Game of Thrones that we can't see. Whoever it is with the people with the power with the money who don't will not appreciate that you did that are gonna go find something else to go use against you. Weapon. Clearly, there's other things, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Right. Other concerns that it, it ain't gonna just be they make that move and they get whatever positive come, then they're left alone. Like them niggas will retaliate against them. Like yeah. you've seen it, like we don't see the Democrats the way they the Democrats do it much more, you know, sneaky and quietly than like the Republicans did it with like Madison Cawthorn. But you saw when that nigga stepped out of line, how quickly they got him together. Clearly, there are other consequences to speaking against what is the desired position of the people you, you know, you work underneath, you know. So that's probably what the T is, I imagine. Yeah. They get they get people to fall in line like the Democratic establishment has a hold over their members that the GOP establishment just does not. Like we saw how AOC, her first day in office, she was in Nancy Pelosi's office leading a sit in with um, uh, climate protesters. And now, like, she'll maybe like hint that leadership is failing, but she just she just goes along with it. So, like, she's whatever. All right, said it. She definitely. You. You absolutely. People have peeped that, Mike. That she. Mm. They definitely got her falling in line. Yeah. In the very beginning, she was coming out. Hey, girls, I'm here to shake shit up. I'm out here for the people. Pull up if you want it. You bitches can't hold me. Like all that shit is over with. <laughs> yeah. I like. I don't. I don't know what it is. Like I refuse to believe that it's committee assignments or you know moving up the ladder in the democratic pro- like there's something like they have a hold on these people and they are scared a lot, shitless of them a lot of them get in this mindset where they think there'll be retaliation and there will be and, yeah yeah and, true and 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 they think it's it's better that i that i'm in here and try to work the strings try to work the system how i can as opposed to me being out of here and being replaced by somebody who is bad faith you know completely mm-hmm. i think that's kind of the calculation that that they make for and in some cases that they you know, maybe right to make that case. I mean, the, the amount of um, money that that the Democratic Party establishment has access to that could, you know, throw at people like AOC in a primary challenge or whoever else. I mean, they, they got a bottomless pit. So I think they're just afraid of, of that retaliation and being replaced by somebody who in their mind and probably correctly so is even worse than them. You apparently, and this is what I've heard from like politicians that I've interviewed who don't work in politics anymore, is you get really used to and told frequently uh, about what's realistic versus like what you're aiming or trying to do and trying to play within that framework. And, and that just gets reinforced a lot. So people just this get into this pattern where it's like, well, uh, you have lofty goals. You just, uh, the Green New Deal sounds awesome. You know, you can do a lot of great things with it. But realistically, what we're going to have to do is broker something where we make both the oil and energy companies uh, satisfied because after all, we need their oil and energy. So you and while the Democrats play, play those mm-hmm. incrementalism games, GOP going yeah. issue by issue saying, yeah. Yeah. This is what I want. Yeah. I ain't budging on it. So we we're going full fascist, right? We want this, <laughs> so, but we all fall in line over this. And I want to know fifty dollars for a Raheem cameo. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm only at the cap. <laughs> <laughs> But I think that's the detriment of the Democratic Party. It goes back to what we were saying earlier. We just want, to put it you know, super simply, we, we we both parties just want different things and operate differently to get it. If it comes down, oh, look at her hand. Y'all see the cat? Come on, let's come out. I didn't know he was getting a free show. <laughs> He's a big kitty. I know, right? He's a man coin, you see? Oh, he is okay. I mine is too. He loves me, and he like you see how my cat is be a part of my foolishness, right? That can so, <laughs> I can see it is crazy. They trying to pay us. Look at this. Coming out here, you want to get the phone? Blink twice if it's if you need us to come. Blink. <laughs> yeah. Who's a boy? I'm accustomed to the foolishness. Oh. Yeah. All right. He's just so chill. Right, he is. On that uh, on that point, though, about you know these progressives or or the Democratic Party, like the, it's it's really leadership, right? The, the, I think there are people like Cory Bush, uh, like AOC that that do that like Ilhan Omar that that do actually want to get things done and accomplished, and they actually do want to help people. But there's like a handful of them, and they're up against the entire system. And the the mm-hmm. reality is, they need to grow their numbers to, to actually within that system do anything. So th- there's, you know, you can make a stink and, you know, uh, mm-hmm. I'm sure there is more strategy wise that they can do in terms of using their platform, using the, the bullet pulpit to actually go after some leadership and, and, and try and challenge them more. But the, the reality is they can't get anything done with the numbers they have. So that's the system that, that they're playing in. So th- they're either going to be politicians or be activists on the outside. And I guess they figure that they have a, a better chance of getting something pushed maybe in the right direction maybe maybe moving the conversation a little bit in in some way when they're uh within those walls as opposed to being outside of them and democrats can always fall back on fear mongering especially biden because that's, that's probably going to be his strategy for 2024 is vote for me or the trump monster will get you and he gonna come in yeah. your closet and, mm-hmm. and, and and take your kids and all this other bullshit so biden yeah. doesn't have he, he didn't have to have a strategy the last round he don't have to have a strategy this round because all they have to do is consolidate power he knows this all yeah. they have to do is consolidate the power round because if you don't vote for me Oh, girl, they're coming for everything. They're coming for your rights. They're coming for your job. They're coming for you, uh, for your kids. They're coming for your Social Security. They're coming for your student loans, girl. They're coming for all that. So Biden is able to renege mm-hmm. on everything he's ever promised, especially them HBCU student loan forgiveness. No, fuck that. Remember the fucking stipend? Y'all remember when he told us, hold on, how much money it was? He told us he was going to get it. $1,000, baby. And then he started fucking doing math. I'm, oh, I'm so mad about that shit. I'm on Biden <laughs> ass about that. He started doing math. I'm on Biden <laughs> ass. That was the first thing I was talking about, Yo, I was heated about that when it when oh my god when him and Kamala turned into fucking mathematicians over that goddamn money I was like this how y'all starting off just the foot that y'all want to start off I'm not talking about we already gave you six hundred dollars I beat your ass Where's yeah, that was so That's, fucked it, up it's, it's uh, terrible politics it's just absolutely garbage politics like it's it's so yeah. it was such a stupid move yeah so I was a co-author <laughs> that video that. with Bernie so cold blooded um <laughs> talking about giving Americans two thousand dollars per month that was that was the tip she was on in the beginning and then just that's, what, that's what they did in Canada just left Bernard to to sink or swim once she got that VP nom and it's just it just don't like ain't nothing sinking up ain't nothing it's just but but it doesn't have to it doesn't mm-hmm. have to because everybody already scared Democrats are already scared. The base is already scared, and they just want things to go back to normal. So it don't. It, you'll hear you'll hear older black people, especially, be like, "Well, he trying his best." That's my grandmother. He trying his best, and he doing. He got to work within the system and whatnot, and all that shit. People ain't trying to hear that shit. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really frustrating because it feels like there's like it. Things have gotten so bad that like even incrementalism feels like almost unrealistic at this point like i remember before like the incrementalism it's like i mean look like we're we're facing a climate catastrophe like we don't have time for incrementalism and like to see the incrementalism over the course of the last two years it felt like wow i I missed the days when i was complaining about incrementalism because that's how bad things have gotten like the whole build back better discussions uh going down to just like the uh, inflation reduction act i just like we're, we're like not even getting crumbs anymore like you know how they throw out crumbs to the working class and that kind of keep you satisfied like you don't even get crumbs anymore it's just fuck you what are you gonna do revolt because we saw in 2020 like millions of people marching across the country and we didn't do jack fucking shit and 
You're not doing anything. Like it was a global movement, and we didn't do shit. And you're not you. You don't care. What the fuck are you gonna do? So they know that like we're not gonna be like the French and like burn shit down ultimately. And even if we do, they're like, oh well. You know, it just there's there's no. It just feels like we're trapped. I hate it. Hey, let me say this though. Uh, trigger warning. Fuck the French. I was just in France two weeks ago. <laughs> all them. Um, let me say this. The girl. Wait, I want to know. It sounds like this is a story. Um, <laughs> Lance, I've been to your country. I got nothing but good things to say about Canada. I had the best time of my life up there in Vancouver. But them French. Uh, uh-uh, that's, that's where they, I live. They could go. They can go. I'm gonna come back up there and fuck with y'all on the one time. But um, <laughs> as far yeah. as the French, the, the the this this this. I hate this from white liberals too. I'm sorry because it's like you talking about oh we got to be more like the French, uh, and th- this this is the mantra that we really hear on social media like oh look at the French they doing this and whatnot. And all of a sudden third yeah you know somebody stuff they told the French gonna on um, ride or whatever you know what I'm saying. But at the same time what the fuck like you what the fuck you think our black asses are out there doing girl like what do you t- you think that's not so how, how is that not equivalent how is our black asses in the streets every other week especially in 2020 not equivalent to what the french were doing i, I was out there in 2016 in baton rouge during the alton sterling uprising police was snatching and grabbing people they got came and got the all that shit like how is that not equivalent we have a a long ass history of protesting in this country but somehow it's not it's it, it that, that gets forgotten immediately when we see other countries fighting or really other European or other white countries fighting for their rights. Mm. Somehow that history is diminished. Mind you, when black people protest, everybody comes up. Everybody comes up. Everybody is benefited when black people protest because when we fighting for rights, every minority group comes up. Women come up. Everybody benefits when we protest, but somehow that is not seen as, as admirable in the U.S. That is not seen as something that's that's a badge of honor to our history in the way that it is France. So fuck France. Um, fuck all y'all over there. True one to the chat. Fuck France. Yeah, that, that, That's such a great point because like, yeah, I mean, you know what I think it is, is that in the United in unions, States, that's, that's the difference. Yeah. There's unions and they're just like the politicians are not afraid of the people. Whereas perhaps in these other countries, um, that is the case, but like, they just like, they don't care. Like you would think that if there was ever going to be action, 2020 would have been it like it didn't matter if we had a republican president like in a functioning democracy if you see millions of people out in the streets and other movements like around the globe being catalyzed from this one in uh, you know uh, instance uh, with george floyd you would think okay this is going to be it but like i think that that really proved that democracy yeah. is fundamentally yeah, broken <laughs> Because yeah. y'all, y'all seem confused by young people. Like, that <laughs> <laughs> is racism. <laughs> like, uh, I don't, I don't know what is this deep dive. <laughs> like, okay, the difference is that people over there were white. <laughs> okay, over here, it's a black man. <laughs> that's it too. But at the same time, what David said when he mentioned the unions, that's what it is, Mike. They don't give a fuck about them people. They can wait out. They yeah. Can wait people out as long as they need to, girl. Y'all bitches gonna get tired and go home, get a ham sandwich and forget yeah. about this shit in a minute, sure. all right? What David said is more pertinent. They have mm-hmm. union power. And mm-hmm. we used to have that. The Democrats have long ago abandoned the, the unions as a as a, as a, a, a stronghold of the base. In fact, when, the when they do that, Gabby, when, huh? and, and, and when that happened, when they start, when they this, decide, <laughs> when they start abandoning them unions, huh? The Democrats well, who got in there unions during uh, <laughs> integration uh-huh. When they decided, hey girls, the white man decided, the poor white man decided, hey girls, you know, we part of these unions because the South really did used to be a union stronghold. The, the mm-hmm. American South was a union the South. stronghold. The South was yeah. a union stronghold. The South used to be a union okay. stronghold. But when integration happened, they said, hey, girl, I know you see these black people over here trying to get the same opportunity, trying to get the same rights as you. You want to work alongside them? You want them making the, you want these black folks making the same money as you? Is that what you really want? You want them integrating at the schools with your kids? That's what you, that's what you really want out here? Mm-hmm. That- that's right, my sister. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> just I just realized it's 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 ten forty. I guess Nina Turner is not 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 coming. Oh, oh sorry. I gotta check. Okay, wait. Let me check the email. Oh, I I totally oh, should have Okay, so, okay, so hey, wait, 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 one second, one second. I gotta say this. Uh, Senator Turner needs to reschedule. She apologizes. Uh, she has a uh, scheduling cancellation. Uh, they um we That's will reschedule it for another episode. Stay on their asses, uh, Senator Turner. Stay on their asses. That's fine. I have things to plug. <laughs> Uh, my new iPad for Teen Vogue dropped today. It is. Let me take. Hold on. Let me take off my hats. I don't know. I know. saw that Ole. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Cool. I ain't read it. What's That's about? awesome. Got to read it. Uh, Black Ops uh, Still Cops. That's what it's called. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. It's about, oh, I really yeah. Read that. It's, it's uh, you know, Tyree Nichols, the the five Black Cops, and you know, institutional racism, yada yada yada. I get my bars off. I think it's one of it's one of my best. So y'all should read that. I put the link. Oh, let me. I put the link. Here we go. Chat. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this up. And my other plug I'll I need to talk about is fucking great. Y'all need to check out the podcast, Unreformed, the story of the Alabama Instru- uh, Industrial School for Negro Children. And it's about this school where they were basically locking up in like horrifying conditions. It's, it's riveting. Josie Duffy Rice podcast. Y'all really need to check that out. Hmm. Unreformed. So those are my Link to plugs. this uh, article in the chat. Yes. My op-ed. Very cool. My love. That's amazing. So should we do a uh, cancel uncancel? Yes, for yeah. canceling the team, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm down for that. Do you have somebody you want to cancel? Say what? Uh, do you have somebody you want to cancel? Uh, yeah, I know you say cancel uncancel. Um, I fuck all that. I got two people I want to cancel. Ain't nobody getting uncanceled. If you cancel, then you probably deserve <laughs> it, and that includes Chrisette Michelle, baby girl. You know, I know you <laughs> trying to come back. I know you trying to come back, girl. I know you trying to do what you can. It ain't gonna be no more Aston Martin music, girl. You are gonna be down there at the fucking church selling fish plates for the concerts, girl. And you did that shit. And you we had the opposite conversation last time. Yeah, yeah. She she her on episode five, Rebecca voted for Kat, right. She knew what she was doing, girl. You knew what she was doing. You went down there singing for that white man. And you knew what she was doing, girl. And you exactly what you're supposed to be. So God bless you. And I'll buy a fish plate or two. You can always come down to my grandma's house and get and get a plate of food with some girl, but it's not happening. It's not giving. Um, I'm, for, I'm not canceling nobody, but I got two people I want to cancel. First up, LeBron. LeBron, we see it, baby girl. We see it. Yeah. I see yeah. you, brother. I yeah. see you. I see you using that sharpie to color in your hairline so you can appe- appeal to twenty year old white women um, behind your wife back, girl. We see it. We know about you, girl. We see you on the TL. Um, uh, anytime there's civil unrest in the black community, we out here fighting for our rights and whatnot. And we see you doing a quick photo op, not getting past the first five pages of Michael Max's autobiography, girl. We've seen the pictures. We know about you, girl. We see you out here um, trying to play like you don't know um, all this nonsense, like support. Supporting black men who's shooting unarmed black women and whatnot, promoting Tory Lanez's oh, music, when yeah. these five singles and that shit, so uh, playing like that's just your favorite artist in the world next to Michael Jackson, girl, bumping Didn't him. know no words. Didn't know no words. Was bumping Didn't on know the goddamn mm. word that song, girl, trying to play that shit during the trial. We see you, baby girl. We see you and we hate it. We see you for who you are, baby girl. One thing about it, if you got past page 10 of that fucking book, then you would have known that Malcolm X was the first one to say, where in the white community do you see singers being leaders? Do you see athletes being leaders? Do you see trumpet players being leaders? These are not leaders. These are clowns. You are a clown, baby girl. You are a clown. And we see it, girl. We see it. And we see it and we hate it. And all it took for you, it, it, this this need of you as a multi-billionaire to want to appeal to the layman, especially the black man, the lay who will never see the amount of wealth that you have accumulated, is sickening, girl, but it speaks to your narcissism. Like, every time something happens, you want to pop out. <laughs> no, it only took you one call from Daddy Obama to get your ass back in line when they were mm. doing the labor strike, baby. Mm. See you. Yeah. See oh, you. so you know true. What see you, baby girl. What'd you say? You know, what, you know what's hilarious about this monologue, right? About an hour ago, I let y'all know that this bitch is a villain on Black Twitter. <laughs> I told y'all I did a fucking. I know. Listen, it's a whole I see people in the chat are like, "Why is she talking about the goat? What's going on?" All the black men, all the black men are like, "What the fuck is going on? What the what the fuck?" Yeah. Trigger wanted. I hate LeBron. Trigger wanted for the chat. I hate LeBron. We, but I say all I say. We see it, sweetheart. Um, we see it and we hate it. Fix up that hairline, clean it up, sis, because we're not impressed. No, um, the second person I want to cancel. Now nah, I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, trigger warning. I don't really have. I don't really feel no way about this white man. Trigger warning. I love his wife though. Trigger warning. His mother in law need to have done better with her though. Like just trigger warning for all that. Cancel Prince Harry, but cancel Prince Harry. Oh, yes. Yeah, I agree. Yes, that I'm is so on board with this Harry. One. 
because baby girl, I'm hearing about the book. I'm seeing the clips. Um, I know you're trying to have, and this is that I want him to just be able to go somewhere in life and just be Harold. Like that's what I want for him. So I want to cancel Prince Harry as the institution, baby. We see you too. We see you in this book that you I, know is messy. This is a this is a gossip rag, girl. This is not. I know, and I know you're trying to coat. What he's trying to do is coat his hatred and his resentment of his family and the institution that he was born into into a deep profound moment but baby girl you in that book talking about how much you miss killing people uh, 25 people 25 people, 25 people in afghanistan we should remember that no 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 if we you in the book out. talking about uh your brother never loved you and didn't want to hug you and whatnot you no. in the book talking about you would still be at the institution if they hadn't treated your wife like that baby girl we were no, careful everybody who gave a fuck so first of all <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I agree. we don't care about these what fucking people at all. Fucking ass. Like, everybody who gives too much fuck about this like give me a fuck these niggas are like it's actually insane these are literally the, the 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 fucking literal kings and queens of fucking colonizing, right? Like they are still currently sitting on the riches of all the fucking countries they have pillaged as someone from the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. These motherfucking colonized, they don't give a fuck. And quite frankly, let me say this, and, and you know, people don't like this or whatever, and yada yada. And I don't say that one thing about me is let people have their things. You if you want to be a fucking loser watching these fucking people get married and whatever and all this yada yada, fucking have at it. I'm not gonna hate on be do your shit. I don't say nothing but Megan, although I will say and I'm gonna find it and put it in the chat for people I found this um there's this video that tells you a whole fucking lot about the backstory on like how Megan landed Harry that really don't paint her in a favorable light I'm glad Piers Morgan has not gotten a hold of, of a child I'm gonna put it in the chat it is some riveting shit I'm not gonna get into it but anyway I'm gonna say this at the end of the day why do we, we can't, none of us can relate to these motherfuckers. Megan is a woman who tells you that she, despite her mother being black, she ain't fucking know she was black, identify as a black woman up until they started treating her like a nigga. And she was like, oh, excuse me. This is crazy. Like, um, she's very much so. These are monarchs. These are colonizers. These are not the picture of fucking progression. What are we talking about? You're totally fine. Yes, being in this fucking institution on everybody's back that is literally built on subjugating other. And now we acting like you play every girl, baby girl. Everybody is walking through. Everybody black on earth is walking through some bullshit. That's how I know you ain't been black before today because every fucking body is dealing with a whole bunch of racist and, and, and indigenous people. Exactly. Indigenous. Exactly. indigenous Twitter and black Twitter when the queen died, like because I am really deep into indigenous Twitter, they were going off and everyone was getting so video. mad, you so mad at it. Everyone was like, there. How could you say that she's the good queen? Blah blah blah. I, know. blah. I had many of viral <laughs> fucking video. Listen, but that's my thing. Everybody all like so up in arms. Like, I hand me out. I don't believe at the end of the day, people are real people and they have every right to feel however they feel about what the fuck they are going through in their life. Harry and Meghan have every reason to feel however in their life, they are the main characters and people are mistreating them within their orbit. Within their orbit, they are the most mistreated in their fucking orbit. In the real fucking world, yeah. these fucking niggas are monarchs. Like, are y'all fucking serious? Who gives a flying Fuck. No, no, no. Don't cancel Harry. Don't cancel Megan. Cancel all the motherfuckers that keep talking about these regular yes, fucking second, people. These second plain fucking James. Cancel the monarchy. People. Yes, fuck all that shit. All <laughs> Cancel that the monarchy. Fuck, fuck yes. Especially, fuck especially Harry. American media that has yes. no reason no, at all to give a shit. Like, it's just so, like, why are Americans Harry? talking about it? Yeah, the, <laughs> are under the power of the king, okay? <laughs> we are a colony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's <laughs> our king, too. Wait, oh, my God. <laughs> That's why you're running around the clock coverage, and I don't understand. Listen, baby girl, we know you was at Tyler Perry House trying on them dresses. Uh, trying on the Medea wigs. And so we know you was out there letting the baby play with the Medea wigs and whatnot at Tyler Perry House, and that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> but at the same time, sweetheart, even in that book, in no reviews of that book, and in no interviews you are doing, you have not come to terms with the fact that your family, you can't help where you are born. You cannot help what family you're born into. God knows I couldn't. But you have not come to, to the true conclusion that your family destroyed a third of the world, girl. Your family, you're directly destroyed the world. You colonized a third of the world. People still, people die because of the will of your grandmother, oh. darling. 
and you still uphold, you still refuse to truly speak out against your brother because all this petty shit about him being bald headed and ugly that is not coming at the monarch. That's you and your brother and that petty shit, and you and your daddy, your uh, your cheat ass daddy and whatnot. That's all this shit is. That's monarch. all it is. You're not coming at the monarchy. You don't care mm. about the institution and what it represents. The fact that you are taking. I remember he even said in the book. And don't get me wrong. I did not pay for this. I'm not giving that white man in my American money. To, to read about this nonsense, no girl, that shit is floating around all over the place in PDS. Even in the book, he says that only I think uh uh uh, uh the it would be a, the cost of a pint, um for what the for what the British taxpayer is giving to the monarch, baby girl, baby girl, the taxes of your brethren in your home country pay for you to be bitching and moaning about all this shit. The cottage wasn't big enough for you. The babies didn't have the security as you wanted. Baby girl. And apparently they're racist. What do you mean? Like, do you and believe I'm like, it? The monarchy is racist. Like, what a surprise. Like, I need to oh my. <laughs> Yo, the, the juxtaposition between make-believe, like, because we live in the modern world, right, and we see all this stuff that's so easy to paint them, like, oh, this, oh, like, that's why, like, that's PR and branding, the symbolic figurehead. Figurehead, what the fuck you talking about? These niggas are still sitting on wealth they still have it did they give it back are they not Absolutely. still about, oh we get this much of the taxes nigga are you collecting taxes from a whole nation like oh my like, bro what are you talking about like <laughs> what's the like, like bro i have watched i am positive i am positive that Harry ain't never seen a motherfucking Medea movie in his fucking life. But because you is who you is, you somehow could just stroll into America and now you and Tyler Perry's boys. Nigga, I've seen every film and every show he put out. He don't know me. <laughs> no, because you royal. <laughs> like, you, you royal. Stop talking to me. Like, your fucking pains and my pains. I don't give a fuck. Nigga, I have five siblings. We have all kind of drama and shit. Who cares? You and your brother have beef. You and your this. I'm so tired of this. Like, it, it, it's very Batman shit. Like, I have one problem. I had all my parents my mom like bro uh -huh. lots of people niggas die every day b you gonna be all right like everybody everybody lose people all the time but somehow you get we all as a fucking world as a world as, as, a, as world. a world yeah, that's, as that, a world that's we're thing. gonna collectively keep talking about i don't give a fuck what your mama your grammy your auntie your uncle your child your wife your sister any of y'all have going on shut the fuck up and go deal with that at home you bitch made ass nigga if you had real problems you would not be whining about like think about this think about what's going on the world. that is a reflection of the fact that y'all are a monarch your biggest mm -hmm. problems in life your biggest problems in life is your mom your grammy and your uncle and your brother don't like your wife is that revolutionary nigga? is it revolutionary oh, that's, that was, the, that was the part of the story i never understood I never, I never so got it. in a room with them and poor. going around cosplaying poor as if you was absolutely destitute. When he say he had nowhere to live, we had no money, we can't get no job. He say in the book, oh, but we had, we had the money, the the fifteen, ten, fifteen million dollars that my mama Diana left me, but we couldn't touch that. That was for the kids, baby girl, baby girl. These is not I, listen. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm 30 years old. I got black problems. All right. Now I'm gonna say this. I'm I'm coming at this from a different way. You are a white man. You are a rich white man. You your wife is a multi millionaire. I think she's making fifty thousand dollars an episode on Suits, which I guess in his mind in that book, Suits was the biggest show ever in the world. Apparently, everybody on his flight to Botswana has seen the show. I ain't never seen a one. <laughs> I seen the 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 same, I yeah. No one has <laughs> ever watched a USA Network original. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> <laughs> just there. science. I'm sorry. It's just I, science. I, right? We have the. I data. watched. I watched Suits <laughs> before I went to law school. And I'm like you, a lawyer. And the entire premise upset my fucking spirit. And I was like, I, I, I can't be a part of this. And I, I remember the funny thing is on Suits, they had her as half, like her daddy, the, the daddy is black. And I remember being so confused, like, but that's what they trying to say. And I Google it. I'm like, huh, well, oh, allegedly this is the T. But that's my thing. Like suddenly, bro, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta revote. We gotta do something about the one drop rule. We gotta do something oh, about it. it. It, gotta... it blew my mind when that news was coming out because I was thinking, like, I, as soon as I found that out, I was like, I obviously picked oh. the scenario where he's sitting down and someone's like, like man, man, how, how, how black is a child going to be? You know? <laughs> <laughs> can we find it? Can we no, like, that's what I pictured. I'm like, that's obviously, someone, obviously that's what's happening. <laughs> someone asked for the premise of suits. Okay, so this is the premise of suits. There is a white boy that is in college and he is 
a genius. That's how they made him out to be. He goes to like a regular college and then he just, he gets into, he um, just had applied to transfer to like Harvard because he's brilliant and he gets in, but he had been running a little business to pay for school because, you know, they like a downtrodden broke white boy narrative, right? So he'd been like um, taking the LSAT for people just for fun. They were like, he was just taking the LSAT for other people and just scoring down high. Um, and so then they get, they find out he's doing that and then they kick him out of school and so that Oh, ruins his dreams. Now he's nobody. He's nothing. Genius white boy. What he could have been. Ah. Then one day, he then then one day he's in a he's in a building going to like some other interview, and he like wanders into uh, the room, and he meets his name ain't Harvey Dent. His name is like Harvey. Harvey is uh, Harvey Dent is the next one. I think his name is Harvey though. Something like that. Anyway, fine, but f- fine blonde white man meets him, and he's a lawyer, and he's just fucking you know brilliant. He just has. Super memory. He sees everything. That's how it is. He sees everything. And now he's a lawyer. So this white man, this big, established, prestigious lawyer that is a partner in a law firm decides that to risk his law license and incarceration and criminal charges to pretend that this white boy is a lawyer. They're going to they're going to just go this lie that he went to Harvard, that he is a lawyer. They're going to hire him at this firm, give him this big job. And now they are hiding his identity, identity, and then uh, Meghan Markle's character is the damn paralegal at the firm that he's in love with. That you know takes the low side, then she she do bad, then she do it again, then she goes, and then she in a relationship with him. That's it. That's what it's about. Um, the dreams of the downtrodden white boy who's now pretending to be an attorney. Yes, that, mm. that's what it's sounds about. like a show mm. I will never watch. Not yeah, doesn't. That was okay, but I, I don't. I don't care enough to watch. <laughs> but I'm gonna say, cancel Prince hair, like baby girl. You, it's time to go to therapy. It's time to talk to somebody. Rest in peace to your mama for real, because she was the baddest. But at the same time, you know, she was putting up with that bullshit too. We gotta just. It's time to tell the truth about yourself, baby girl. It's time to tell the truth about all this shit. Now, one thing I will say in his defense, until you have had people, and this goes back to my TL Terrace days, until you have people try to tell you try to form the narrative of your life and you feeling as though you don't have any control of it. I can sympathize with that. But at the same time, it, there comes a point, especially in, 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 as he's describing these things, even in that documentary on Netflix, he's describing these things as where like, um, well, they, they didn't, you know, she, she wore the same color dresses, Kate, and I wanted to re- issue a retraction um, in the news and they wouldn't let me. Baby girl, you got to pick me mm. You got to pick your battles. If that's if the worst thing that is happening to you that day is that somebody said something about your, what your dame was wearing uh, at the Wimbledon or something like that, that's the worst thing happening to you. When you're trying to contact the press to get that shit retracted, it's time to go to therapy, sweetheart. It's time. It's time. To go. Hey, I don't it's like so it. tone deaf. I think it's, I don't just let me be clear. I don't like especially dislike Harry. Like obviously within their situation, if I cared about the whole dynamic, obviously they would be the ones who would give a fuck about. I guess like I don't I don't dislike Harry. All things considered, I just don't give a fuck about them. Um, that being said, I just don't. Why do we always perpetrate and like because they decide they're not going to give up their royal titles? Um, they're going to leave the kingdom. Not a not a homeless. Like I don't know why we keep talking about it. Like you know, Tyler Perry that took that name. Like what the fuck are you talking about? These is rich. Like why are you talking? Like I don't understand. They went to another mansion. Million. They flew to a bank. mansion in Victoria. Yeah, like, they're just in Canada in another mansion. They they went from one mansion to. I gotta say, I am I am over I am over Harry and this discussion. I fucking I, I can't stand these people. I don't care about them at all. <laughs> now you see, <laughs> I, now I, y'all feel like you. I think we spent too much time talking about this this asshole. Um, yeah, oh, David, yeah, I, and I, it, I know, I, mm, I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. I, I, again, I don't get the obsession. Uh, so I guess we're not going to uncancel this week. We're just going to cancel. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to abstain on the LeBron one because I, uh, this doesn't feel like a conversation. <laughs> oh, which... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't even, I don't even know enough about LeBron. I don't give a shit. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> So <laughs> let's cancel the British. I, I learned a lot. I, I I've done a lot of learning. British um, monarchy definitely British canceled. Monarchy. Yeah, yeah. It if it wasn't and already. all people, <laughs> and also all, you know, I'm a lawyer. I got to be clear. Cancel the British monarchy and those who have since removed themselves from the British monarchy, but once stemmed from such. <laughs> like so, we make sure we're inclusive. Make sure we get everybody. I didn't want to. I didn't want it to be no strays. Make sure everybody catches this. <laughs> <laughs> all of them. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, I I will say a. I don't want to get into this conversation now because because it's late. Me, I think me and Bender are on the East Coast here. Actually, a lot of you on the East Coast, but I could tell me and Bender are tired. <laughs> we gotta get off. But um, I I was going I was going to uncancel Mr. Beast, but that's that could be a different conversation. 
He wasn't. He yo, wasn't. Yo. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, yo, I, 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 I support yo, that, David. Okay. Why are you bringing this up now? Why are you bringing this up now? It's 11 o'clock. Next week. We can talk about this next week. Next week. I would like to share his video, explain his response to that because it was his tweet. He was not. He had no problem with Dr. B. Whatever. You should uncancel me. Dr. B. was canceled over that. Cancel you. Yeah, yeah. Who was the bad guy of the internet on Tuesday, okay? Let me get that for, the, for y'all for the chat. Hold on for Alex's response. I got a cake for my boy right quick. Let me just do it. <laughs> must do, must do. Are you doing your, your call-in show? Uh, I know. I'm, I'm sick, remember? I don't feel like it. Okay. <laughs> I, <laughs> I just oh, want to get this I, I, I can't let anybody who doesn't like me um, be able to try to pretend they like it better without me. I'll never miss a show. It'll never happen. You'll never get the fucking satisfaction. <laughs> like, I'll come here if I'm in the hospital. That's the link to Alex, LOL overruled, um, explaining himself. So he was never have no problem with Mr. Beast, Dave, Dr. Beast, Web, whatever you name. But that's my boy. So I had to grab mm-hmm. my yeah. cake. Okay. Like, I'm going to tell y'all, thank y'all for having me on, though. I had a good time with y'all. Y'all the realest. Uh, Lance Hole Canada down. Um, and it was, it was real cool. It was real cool meeting y'all. It really was. Also yeah, Canadian. Yeah. Thanks for coming coming on. I love it. Sorry. Right. Also, I put I put all of Canada on Lance back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll share the weight. Someone said you're too high. Admit it. That's crazy. What you mean? I'm. That's I'm, no I'm like. Thing. That's yeah, no that's too high. That's, 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 that's the whole. True, but... First of all, you don't expect continuity. <laughs> it would be a, it would be a <laughs> disturbing if I didn't come here that way. Second, I've been much higher than this friend. <laughs> if I was too high, you would know it. All right, you would know. I just want one thing before I go. Um, I do run a cute little nonprofit, like I mentioned, the Thurman Perry Foundation. Um, not really asking for anything though. We are running a, a, a fun, our first fundraiser of the year this month. Um, we are Beyonce certified. I just want y'all to know she posted this on the Be Good Foundation Instagram. I'm still running on the house. Really? Yes. Yeah, so we Beyonce certified now. But not asking y'all for anything. But if you need something, I'm all about leading. If you need something, you need a scholarship to go to school. Our scholarship application is annual. Uh, our third annual cycle closes um, 27th this month. We're giving forty thousand dollars away. You need your rent paid. We give we paying people's rents and mortgages every month this year. We're going for it. Uh, whatever you need, come to ThurmanPerryFoundation.org. Come find me on Twitter. That's my ad. Whatever you need, we got you. Awesome. And I will, uh, if I can find yeah, those I mean, links, I'll, I'll share them below the video as well on, on YouTube. Yeah. What they said? What'd you say, Alan? No, no, hey, no, no, no. David addressed it. Awesome. Also, okay. notice they gave $100 for Raheem. I meant that we, I don't know if we did this out there. <laughs> $100, but a hundred dollars. I just day whoever whoever gets that money. I oh, tell nice. him, thank you. Thank Address you so my, much, Charlie. Pet. All right, that's a hundred dollars <laughs> richer because Raheem. Because <laughs> Raheem put on the show. Thank you. That'll <laughs> go straight to uh, Streamyard. Listen, not my, in my son pocket. Did that. Good. <laughs> All right. Anyways, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Gabrielle, for coming on. You were fantastic. Yeah, and, thank uh, you so much. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll see y'all next time. Yeah. See you. Read my op ed. Bye. Uh, bye, everybody. I guess you all know where to find me, the Surf's TV. Oh, yeah, we well know. I'm just yeah. sticking around for, uh, I got to do these super chats and then I'm going to get off. Okay. I'm going to drop you YouTube, you awesome. youtube.com slash Matt Binder, uh, twitch.tv slash Matt Binder. I tried to keep a little bit quieter tonight because my mic is acting up. Hopefully, I'll fix it. And it, I'll be, it sounds great it now. Sounds it's okay like, now. It sounds okay now. Oh, so wonderful. The show, the show awesome. ends, and yeah, the show ends, <laughs> yeah. and everything sounds great. Well, it's crystal clear, clear now. Popping and then it would like get cleared. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Because everyone in the chat kept saying you sound like a robot. And so I was like, I don't want to ruin everyone's wonderful night. So <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden, come in and it sounds like uh, the uh, instead of Matt Binder. Someone mentioned Bender from Futurama is on the show tonight. So. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It just it, it was popping, but it's 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 good now. Oh well, thanks, Mike, for fixing as we say goodbye. All right, everyone, I will see you all uh, real soon. <laughs>